Uh, good evening, everybody. This is the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, October 17th, 2016. Happy 32nd birthday to my son, Johnny. Um, I want to say that uh, this meeting is being recorded by ACMI and is also available. It's streamed live also on ACMI. Um, first, we have our consent agenda. I do want to note that uh, Attorney Heim. Would you like me to? <coughs> uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Attorney Heim right now is at the ARB meeting. Uh, they're hearing several articles in relation to the special town meeting. He's there to advise them during those discussions, and then we'll be here as soon as he's able to get here through with that. Thank you. Consent agenda. We have the minutes of the meeting, <coughs> September 26, 2016, reappointments to the tree committee, Mary Ellen Aronow, Eliza Burden, Susan Stamps, Ed Tremblay, all terms to expire 10-31-2019, reappointment, Zoning Board of Appeals, Christian Klein, Term to expire 10-1-2019, a request for a permit for Veterans Day Parade, Friday, November 11th. Our Director of Veterans Services, Jeffrey Chunglo. Approval of the Lions Eye Mobile on street in front of Town Hall on Saturday, October 29th, 2016, from the Arlington Lions Club, David B. Garrity. A request for a special one-day beer and wine license, October 29th, 2016, at the Woodmore Robbins House for a private event, Rachel Diamond Callo, or Callow. A request special one day all, uh, like alcohol license November 5th, 2016 at the Whittemore Robbins House for a private event. Peter Mahoney, an appointment of new election workers. Virginia April, April, 73 Webb Quawit Road, Precinct 9. Is Mo there a motion? Move approval. Moved by Mr. Burns, seconded by Second. Mr. Curo. Um, any, Mr. Dunn? I just note that uh, Mr. Klein's here in the audience and we can congratulate him and or ask him to say a word, few words. One of those things you don't have to be here, but since you're here, we might as well say hi. Uh, I was over at the ARB, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, Christian Klein has just been a, just to say, it's been a privilege to be on the Zoning Board of Appeals the past few years, and I uh, look forward to hopefully continuing as long as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Uh, any further comment? If not, all those in favor say aye. On a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Carroll, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. I'm sorry, I'm not at 100%. I was at the hospital last night with one of my, everyone's pretty much okay, but kind of running on that way, so. We now have appointments. Council on Aging, Rick Fenton, term to expire June 30th, 2019. Tree Committee, Mara Vatz. Uh, actually, let me do them one at a time. Council on Aging, is Rick here? Hi, oh. Want us to bring the microphone to you, or? Uh, yeah. yeah, if you could, yeah. It's just that I keep forgetting, poor ACMI, I have to keep remembering to tell people, speak into the microphone. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, good evening. Yeah, good evening to you. Yeah. You should get extra points for joining us tonight. <laughs> uh, if you could just, we're all meeting you, just say your name and address for the record and just a sort of brief synopsis of your. Okay, uh, I'm Rick Fenton. I live at 45 Grafton Street in Arlington for over maybe 25 years now. and. Uh, uh, I um, was asked to, you know, consider being a member of the Board of the Council on Aging, and I've been in, involved there for quite a number of years as a volunteer, and it's a wonderful organization, wonderful group, and I sat in one of their meetings recently, and, uh, you know, I'd be very honored to be able to uh, help them in way, whatever ways I can. Um, what else should I tell you? That's good. Thank, thank <laughs> okay. you. Thank you. Is there a motion? I move approval. Mr. Carroll, seconded by? Second. Mr. Byrne, any further discussion? Can you chase them down? <laughs> <laughs> yet, I'm, I'm getting faster with this, but it, uh, today's my first day on it. So, uh, <coughs> um, but uh, I could probably catch them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Not you, you very much for your willingness to serve. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Tree committee. Is it okay for me to? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks. You're in. You get extra points for. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, one of our COA drivers and one of your new colleagues is there. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Maybe I can give you a, <laughs> a lift. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah. soon. Uh, tree committee, Mara Vats, term to expire October 31st, 2019. Is it Mara? Mara. Mara, thank you. 
Hi, I'm Mara Vatz. Uh, I've lived in Arlington for almost exactly a year. Uh, my family bought a house last October on Warren Street, and I have two young kids, almost two and five. Um, I care deeply about the environment, and this is one area where I feel I can make a difference. Uh, I've been volunteering with the tree committee for the past few months, uh, helping to conduct the tree inventory and distributing flyers about uh, encouraging residents to request street trees and uh, working at Town Day, and I'm excited for this opportunity. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Is there a motion by Move Mr. Dunn, seconded by Second. Mr. Greeley? <laughs> uh, any further discussions, Mr. Greeley? So where did you come from, if I might ask? What town did you? Oh, in North Cambridge. North Cambridge. So <laughs> so just a few blocks. Immediately noticed a different treescape. <laughs> it did, actually. Warren is rather barren of trees where I am, so I, I did notice that right away. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Greeley. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Thank you. Vision 2020 Standing Committee, Nathaniel Strasberg, Senior Planner. <coughs> term to expire June 30th, 2019. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Nathaniel. My nickname is Nat. So Nat Strasberg, um, it's really a pleasure to be here. I've been here about a month now. I'm surrounded by fantastic people. I'm doing interesting things. Vision 2020 is spans so many vital, very, very interesting topics. And one person that I was speaking with used the term, it's an incubator of ideas. Um, so being a planner, having a connection to the town, um, I look forward to contributing to this, you know, to these ideas and, and to, to bettering the, the process. Thank you. Is there a motion by Move Mr. Kiro? Second. Seconded by Mr. Byrne. Did, did you have? Oh, Mr. I just wanted Kiro, to welcome Mr. Mr. Strasberg. We had a nice chat on the phone about one of the uh, items that's coming up on the agenda. And, uh, really glad to uh, to uh, have you here, and uh, you know you've got uh, big shoes to fulfill, Indeed. Uh, Joey Indeed. Glass, Clusco. <laughs> but uh, uh, welcome aboard. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. I just wanted to say welcome as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank yeah. you for your willingness to serve. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you, Nat. Mm -hmm. uh, a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Good to see you, Nat. Good to see you soon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful when you say that. Just <laughs> um, we now have a Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, we have two appointees for a full membership and two associate members, if I could just give as eloquently as I can tonight, sort of a brief outline of the process um, that I picked up from our colleague, uh, Mr. Dunn, I think the last time we did this was Actually, three, was three, three years, years ago. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, uh, just sort of in line, um, had interviews, uh, there's two full membership positions, two associate member positions. Uh, Mrs. Kropelk and I had conversations with the town manager and, and town council, Attorney Heim, about possibly doing some things to streamline. Um, and where we have Mr. Klein Christian here, Mr. Quinn Patrick. It's, I don't see Joseph. I know his wife's due any minute, but baby-wise not. But anyways, um, one of the things that um, we, we'd like to propose, I'd like to propose to my colleagues that town council and town manager are certainly in concert with and town council said we could do is some of the terms ended in August, some ended in October. If we could just, you know, with staggering years, just make them all October 1st or 31st or whatever date uh, we have in there. Um, and then um, the other thing was when I uh, conducted the interviews um, with uh, three of the candidates, one of the full members, uh, Pam Heidel, who served many, many years as a full member. I think she might have even started as an associate member and currently serving as chair, uh, submitted a request, as we all know, to all of us, asking that she um, no longer be chair as well as uh, could go back to uh, associate membership status, which is still there at all of the meetings. It's just, you know, um, it works better for her work and schedule professional, et cetera. The other thing, um, that I discussed with the people that um, I interviewed, and Mrs. Kropalko was there to take down um, any particulars we needed to. And I made sure in concert with what my colleague had done previously, it was the same outline, everybody got asked the same thing, 
with the one open-ended question, you know, is there anything you'd like to ask or I didn't ask? Uh, one of the things that um, I had uh, set up that I would like and would present to my colleagues is that right now there's just a chair that is elected, but in the, uh, I've watched the last ZBA meeting because they're going to be more and more, I believe, now, um, thankfully, recorded by ACMI. Um, uh, what I would like to propose is that the um, Zoning Board of Appeals at their first meeting, which I, their next meeting, which I believe is tomorrow night, um, uh, have the administrator, which would be uh, Ms. Maher, Ashley, s similar to Mrs. Kropelka, serve as chairman pro temp, call for nominations for chair, people make them motion, somebody second it, member of the committee calls, uh, makes a motion to close nominations for chair, then Ashley would call for the vote, then whoever the chair is would then take the gavel of whatever, pen, <laughs> um, and then would call, what I would like to have and propose is that we just have it set up from the get-go that there is also a designated vice chair, so that, um, especially where there's going to, there's a lot of people going to some of these meetings around, um, you know, Mugar, Oak Tree, et cetera, I think it might save 5, 10, 15 minutes in the beginning. So one of the things I'd like um, to hear from my colleagues if they feel anything that that's not a way we should go, to also ask them tomorrow night after they elect a chair to also to open nominations and elect a vice chair. So moved. Second. Okay, Mr. Grilly's motions seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. Just a point of clarification, Madam mm -hmm. Chair. So, did you say Maria's going to go or no? And <coughs> pro tem, you said Ashley. Ashley. She okay. usually. Yeah, I know. She's kind of secretary. Yeah. Oh, I was trying to say, like, and similar to what the school committee does, you know, yes. they start until. And with that, I do see we've already. Saw, seen Mr. Klein, Christian here. Um, and please, Christian or um, Mr. Quinn, Patrick, feel free to comment on that or if there's anything else um, you, you'd like to bring uh, before us. Uh, if you could come up to the microphone and name an address. And a, um, there may be some other thing you want to streamline that I I don't. Patrick Quinn, 223 Mass Ave, Arlington. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Pam. She's not in the room today, but for all her service. That was great. Uh, second of all, our gavel would be like a knuckle, maybe a pen. <laughs> Thirdly, I have a nickname, Sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Semper Fi, I forgot. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I, I'm happy to serve as a full-time member, if you so choose. Okay. And then, um, after, I would just suggest, after you all organize, um, I watched the previous one, but also the last um, ZBA meeting, um, amongst the chair, vice chair, and its members, um, and we had discussed this, sort of a, whatever structure works best for you all. Like we say for Citizens Open Forum, we have a preamble and a, a designated um, time distinction. Not that you have to do that, because sometimes mm -hmm. you know information comes forward. But um, I, I know it really helps for, especially we're, we're moving forward. And I know for the developer, they're going to have their own uh, reporter there, and the town has their own reporter, just to streamline and make it easier for whoever has to create the official record. If you could just tell people name and address, you know, for the record, or how, whatever phraseology you all want. And whatever you decide amongst yourselves um, that would help, you know, make your business run as efficiently as it has been, but anticipating that um, you're going to have, might be a little bit more work in terms of if you'd get a larger crowd and the logistics of planning that and you know working with Ashley and whoever you need um, to effectuate that and then I just want to say that um, the town manager um, will be contacting um, within the week or so um, contacting you all just to um, touch base with you and, and provide any sort of update or whatever that you may need is okay that a good synopsis okay mr. Dunn uh, so Thank you for your willingness uh, to serve. So, um, and I have a con my. I'm going to preview my comments, which are for item number 19, where we're talking about uh, the the oak tree. And so, the ZBA is going to be under a lot of pressure from a, a lot of different people about uh, the outcomes related to Mugar, the Mugar property. And um, but I, and I wanted to apply a little bit of pressure, but not about the outcome. What I really want to talk about, if, and I will talk about under item number 19, is uh, the, how important the process is. Because the decision that the ZBA makes 
I'm, I'm have every faith that you're going to come to the right decision. The thing that I worry about is that you're going to come to the right decision and not necessarily document it or make the motion with the or, or, or you know with the right um, you know attachments to it. And those attachments are what are going to drive you know the next n years of how uh, this uh, this is debated. And so. Um, I, I won't try to, I mean, I have opinions on the outcome, but that's not what I'm trying to tell you right now. What I'm really trying to tell you is, please take your time and just, it's, it's gonna have a lot of ramifications and we're counting on you to do it right. We know you can, that's why we're appointing you. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, it doesn't hurt to men. This is an unusual one. And so that's why I bring it up now. Chairman Mahan, I brought that up in the interview. Great. And like I told it, the devil's in the details. It's, it's getting it all down. It's dotting all your I's, crossing all your T's. Thank you. And, and which is why, you know, I do want to thank Mr. Chapdelaine and Attorney Heim. Um, part of the reason I'm saying that, that the town manager will follow up um, with the ZBA members is this is a lot of stuff coming all at once, and we have Attorney Heim, and then we have outside counsel, Attorney Whitten, and there's all sorts of things, but you're in your own island yourself, and we all respect that. But just so that... Um, my biggest thing is I always said when I first got anything, pop on a board or whatever, tell me what it is, the big boo-boo that I shouldn't do because <laughs> I want to make sure I don't do that. So it's not so much directing Zoning Board of Appeals full members and associate members on what to do in terms of for forming your opinions and looking at the law and taking testimony and how you deliberate and vote, but it's just all the minutia administrative stuff um, for that. So what I'll do is, Mr. Greeley? When you're done. I, I'm all, I was going to say, what I'll do is, uh, I don't see uh, Mr. Moan here yet, so I'll just entertain a motion for Mr. Quinn. I have to question his uh, commitment to the committee now. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Moved by Mr. Greeley, yeah. seconded um, by. I, I do have a question. Is, it, is this one of those appointments that we should make now and invite um, just to come back later just due to the timing of you know, what's going on at the ZBA? So, as someone who doesn't like doing that, in this unusual case, yes, we, uh, first of all, we have a strong reason to do it. Second of all, we saw him um, a few years ago when we brought him in mm -hmm. or when we appointed him as an associate. Mm -hmm. And for those, yeah. so they kind of work in both directions. One, it's really important, we should talk to him. On the other hand, we did. Right, yeah. right. So, uh, Mr. Greeley, would you amend your motion to move approval over Mr. Moen and Mr. Quinn? Yes. Seconded by Mr. Carroll. I don't know if you originally did it, and I thought, I did not. okay. Um, any <coughs> further questions, Mr. Grill? Comment. So, I don't know if you've picked this up yet, but there's a lot of opinions about this project that you're about to, Christian, as well, I'm sure. So, thank you for your willingness to listen to all of those opinions, uh, for the service you've given so far, and the service you're willing to give on a Veterans Council, Chamber of Commerce. Um, Arlington businessman, so uh, thank you very much, Patrick. Thank you. Okay. So a motion by Mr. Greeley. Um, oh, Mr. Um, no, I, I just want to echo uh, Kevin's sentiments. Um, I, this is obviously, uh, you know, it takes a lot to step up and serve on this board right now um, with, you know, everything that, all the work that you'll be doing, and, and it is um, going to be a, a tough task, but I'm very grateful that we have uh, both you and the current members, um, you know, at the helm here, and I'm, uh, you know, I have my full confidence is in you um, throughout the next, you know, upcoming years. So thank you. Motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Caro to appoint Mr. Moen, Esquire, term to expire October 1st, 2018. Mr. Quinn, term to expire October 1st, 2019. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. <clears throat> Next, we have to fill the two associate member positions. I just want to note, because as we had in the previous uh, appointments, the years are staggered, and the two associate member seats um, that are open, um, they're only for the year because of that staggering. The following year, whoever those two associate members are, and it could be the exact same two people, they'll get the additional, I think it's a three-year appointment. Um, but we had to keep what was the open seat that. So with that, uh, associate members Pam Heidel and Walter Fye. Move approval. Moved by Mr. Second. Chiro, seconded by Mr. Greeley. Uh, this is reappointment, so we don't require that they be here. Motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Greeley. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Citizens Open Forum. 
Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three-minute time limit to present a concern or request. Good evening. Just Good your evening. name and address for the record. My name is Jim Sickless. I live in Glenbrook Estates. I'm uh, a resident here of 53 years and I've lived at Glenbrook for 30 years. I moved there to have a little peace and quiet and get off the hill of Pamela Drive, if you know where Pamela Drive is. And I'm sorry to say two years that's gone by that you people gave the okay to open a Sona restaurant. As you can see, I gave you people a copy of all the complaints that I have, if you want, I'll read them all. Um, well, we, have, we definitely have that before us, and it's, it's three minutes, but I'm, I'm willing to give you more than that. If you want to just kind of briefly go through each one. Well, you, or, or you, you, you highlight the ones that you'd like to highlight to us. Sorry. You... One, of the, one of the worst is the, is the exhaust fan. And I had one of the town's people up, and they said that the, the noise that that gives off is within the rights of the noise that, uh, that the uh, fan can give off. I listen to it, it's only a, every night I go to bed, that thing is wheeling on from five o'clock that I get home, I'm still working. I'm an 85 year old Korean veteran. And uh, I listen to that, I try to get home and relax and I'm listening to that whirling noise until 10.30 at night, every night. We can't sit out there in our patios because of the cars, they're sitting there and idling. In the winter, it's even worse. And the snow plowing, they come in at 5.30, 6 o'clock and lay that plow down and wake us up in the morning every time it snows. These are some of the complaints, and as you can see, I had the police down there on one Sunday, and they stopped them from cleaning some of their greases off of their, uh, I don't know whether they were their fan, I mean their uh, filters or what it was. And they stopped them because they came in about 5.30 in the morning on a Sunday. Again, they opened up uh, uh, and did more work after 8 o'clock. The following Sunday, they did the same thing. And this grease is all going down the drains. It shouldn't be going down the drains. So somebody should speak to them. Okay. And uh, I'd appreciate something's got to be done. No, no. It's a sorry sight. And then, you know, just, just this week in the papers, there was a, there was a little story about the storefronts in the, t in the town. Well, they, the Sona restaurant, has had a broken window from either a rock or a baseball, and they haven't replaced that since the baseball season. Doesn't make sense. No. I mean, we try to keep this town in a good, good manner, mm -hmm. and they ignore that. No, what I'd like to do is, um, because, only because it's Citizens Open Forum and with the open meeting law, in terms of, you know, we have to post things that we can discuss, deliberate, take votes, as well as reading, you know, the, the eight or nine um, concerns that you outlined, and now the tenth about the window with the baseball. Um, what I'd like to do is, um, because I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, who does the action plan? In some cases, I see Board of Health. In some cases, um, I see the Arlington Police Department. In one case where you're talking about some uh, possibly a stop sign or some road safety improvements that could be transportation advisory, it could be um, uh, the police department. So what I'd like to do is if one of my colleagues, Mr. Greeley, well, to refer. I was gonna say refer it to the manager because mm -hmm. all that you mentioned, um, it's a tough situation if it is within legal noise limits and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, is but, there any chances of having them putting up some kind of a fencing around it up up on the top of the roof? Well, Mr. Chaplain, if you refer to me, and, yeah. and as you described, there's yeah. multi it's multi departmental. I'll we'll chase yeah. it down. So, uh, Mr. Dunn, sorry. I apologize. I did not mean to no, interrupt. No. Um, so when I re when I read some, uh, 
things like this. So I re, I, I'm, I feel like there's a, a, a combination of some of these things are harder to fix and some of them are easier to fix. And I'm wondering, uh, have you had a chance to talk to the manager of Sono about any of these? I have gone in there two or three times, maybe more. Do you think you've got made it? Have, what's your reception? He's been like? a nice guy. Yeah. Means nothing. Because the workers do what they want to do. They, they, they come in. They, there's a door in the back. They call the door. I, doesn't doesn't uh, the fire laws say you have to have egress on the front and back of a building? I'm yeah. not enough of an expert on that well, to answer that question. I don't know, question. but that's what I understand, okay, as far as the bylaws. There's only a four-foot square door there. That's how they get out of that back way, uh, door. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I would think it should be a regular door. I guess one of the things that I would, oh, I'm, I'm sure the manager is far ahead of me on this one, but I suspect that one of the, con, one of the ways to manage some of the easier things here is, like, is simply some conversations are, are, are probably going to make some progress on, whereas others of these, I agree, are going to be harder to resolve. <laughs> Thank you. So what we're going to do is refer to the town manager along with Mrs. Kropelka from the selectman's office. They're going to go through each item, the nine you listed, the two that you spoke from, from the microphone. Um, the town manager will figure what department heads that he oversees, if it's a Board of Health, if it's a Arlington Police Department, and if it's transportation advisory, et cetera, as well as you know, possible outreach um, um, to the... I'd like to point out one more thing. Okay, okay. Last but not least. <laughs> All right, you're up okay. to 11. On Forest Street, when the cars come around that corner onto Summer Street, when the light is on, they keep going and they, they, they go around that corner without any slowing down. And there's a crosswalk there, and if somebody is just stepping off, he's going to get hit. And, and they should have a stop before you turn. That's, that's your point nine. And that's, it, it's no, got to be yeah. done, really. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. we don't want anyone to get hurt first. Right, nobody does. So, no, that was your point number nine. No, I, we, you definitely have little, Okay, so, but what I'm saying is we can't Diane, get in. Diane, I'm a little nervous. That's okay. Today's a special day for me. My son's birthday? No. Your birthday? 62 years ago, I was aboard the Leyte, USS oh, Leyte. Thank you. Thank you for your service and sorry 22 for- 22 men died. So, sorry for your brothers that lost their lives. I yeah. don't say anymore. But thank you. Thank you for remembering and honoring them. Thank you for your service. Okay, so we we'll refer this to the town manager and um, Mrs. Kropelka, and we will get back to you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you all. Please. Appreciate it. Thank you. For um, anyone else here for Citizens Open Forum? If not, Citizens Open Forum is closed. We'll now go to traffic rules and orders, other business. Somebody. Not a stranger anymore. Uh, uh, vote for bike repair station location, Nat Strasburg. A one-month-old senior planner. <laughs> Busy. Quite a, he he quite gave a beard it to for, me. <laughs> that's quite a beard for one-month-old. I've been working hard on it. <laughs> um, good evening. Uh, Whole Foods has generously offered to pay for and install oh, wow. a bicycle repair facility along the Minuteman bikeway. And before I proceed further, I wonder whether I can hand out two supplements. Is yeah, that a possibility? Yeah, definitely. May I give them to you? The facility itself is manufactured by Duo Guard based in Michigan. It's made of steel. It is basically shaped like a small pole with a square footprint. Extending from the pole at the top are two small bars used to hang the bicycle. Hanging on the side of the pole is a series of steel cables. And at the end of each cable is a bicycle repair, repair tool, screwdriver, tri Allen key, etc. There's also a tire air pump operated by a foot pedal. A new feature not represented on the renderings in your material, as Whole Foods agreed to offer this today, is the addition of a pump. So it would be a foot pedal pump. So the new rendering that I'm passing out shows what the new design would look like with a pump. And then you also see on the other uh, supplement um, the various tools on the um, contraption. Um, there would be a sign at the top of the facility that alerts bicyclists to its presence. 
Whole Foods has also offered to provide a replacement cable and tool set should any of the items need to be replaced, though my understanding is this equipment is hard to damage and requires very little maintenance. The amount of ground space required for bicyclists to comfortably use the facility is approximately 6.2 feet by 5.75 feet. The proposed location is a small pocket of space on the green strip alongside the bikeway, just to the northwest of the Mass Ave Mystic Street intersection. This is obviously a well-traveled and centralized location. Um, at a recent bike count, hundreds of people um, passed by that location in a day, um, certainly well over 100 during a rush hour period. Enormous number of people, as you know. Um, I do have uh, Christopher Tonkin here, chair of ABAC, and I also have a representative of Whole Foods here, uh, Matthew Robertson, um, should you have any further questions. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dunn? Um, how big or what's the relative signage related to the Whole Foods, like the, the advertising part of it, part of it, I guess? Come to the microphone and just name an address for the record. We're going to pull you up anyway, so don't feel like. <laughs> uh, Matthew Robertson. I'm uh, marketing and community relations with Whole Foods Market. Um, home address is 100 Rivers Edge Drive, Medford, Mass. Um, all we would look for is to brand the, you know, the station itself, not any additional signage. Uh, we have a third party vendor that does this pretty frequently. They would come and um, basically just be our logo, you know, on with some cling paper on the repair station itself. Okay. So what I'm after is, like, so I guess I should have started by saying I love it. I mean, I, like I, I'm familiar with a bike repair station at the corner of 3rd and Broadway in Cambridge. It's the only mm -hmm. one that I'm, like, that I used to park my bike there. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm, I think this is a great thing and I want to support it. The one thing I just have to ask about is uh, what I wouldn't want to support is like us putting in a bike station or like putting in a giant billboard that happens to have a bike station as, as attached to it. And I don't think that that's what you're trying to do, but I have to understand a little bit more about the size. So do you have any, could you tell me more about like what is the size of the sign? How much of it is a logo, uh, is it advertisement? Is there, like, and so like the little, the diagram I've got here says, you know, like there's a sign maybe up here at the top. Is, yep. is that what we're talking about? And that's the whole thing is a Whole Foods logo. Or are we talking about something bigger or smaller than this? Can I think, you, you know, we could be pretty flexible with that. Um, I think we would want that sign on the top to just to be what it is there. Um, so that people know what, that it's a repair station. Um, what I was thinking was the, the unit itself, um, which is steel, I believe. Um, we, can, we can brand that piece. Um, and I'm not sure if you guys, you know, if you're familiar with our store, or if not, uh, next time you go there, if you do go there, take a look at the, the car corral in the parking lot. It's, um, we would use the same material. It's, it's covered and branded, and it's uh, weatherproof, and it's clinged right on there. So, so then I'm, I'm ready to make a motion if uh, Nat and Adam are okay with it, which is that the signage is subject to planning department approval. Is that... I think that's more than fair. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I move approval with thanks, uh, subject to that condition. Seconded, Seconded by yeah. Mr. Byrne. I'll get Mr. Carroll. I'm trying to go back and forth. Mr. Grilly? Yeah. Um, thank you. Fantastic uh, community service here. Very, very admirable of you and Whole Foods. And um, Nathan, admiral, admirable of you as well. Am I understanding we're going to put tools in a basket? Did, did, am I, did I get that right? Or? So basically, it's a series of cables, probably this large, that hang from just a small metal base up here. And at the end of each cable is one of those tools. I got you. And so you pick up the, you know, you pick up the tool and-, and I was wondering it. if they'd be there day two. <laughs> <laughs> that explains it. Thank the you. cables are pretty important to this whole thing. <laughs> I got it. I, I got see it. some bicyclists yeah. driving the whole thing. <laughs> I needed that Allen wrench. Um, I'm Mr. Grillo. Thank you, all set. I support and, um, it. Just in terms of, uh, will there be any sort of uh, signage or inherent understanding that, you know, if, if somebody says one of, the towns, but but it would be um, Whole Foods uh, instruments weren't pro properly calibrated or did something, and I'm just thinking that somebody says, "Hey, you broke my bike." Like okay, using your own risk. Uh, thing. I, I would just put that forth as uh, a suggestion that um, you know these these are, and you may already have it in there. These tools are optional for your use only, and 
you know, whatever you want to do to absolve, um, that somebody could say, you know, you, you said you had this certain whatever wrench that's here, and it said it was five-eighths, and it was only four-fifths, and it stripped my piece on my bike, it's going to cost me $800. So I would just put it as a suggestion. Um, you might want to look into that. If you don't, that's okay, but I'm just thinking on the liability. I'll pursue it with town council. Yeah, yeah. It, it, if you and town council and whomever deem fit, that's fine. If not, it's not a deal breaker for me. So, um, any on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further questions or comments? Anybody else here? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item 15. Nat Strasburg, Senior Planner, Creation of 25th Anniversary Committee, Committee for Minuteman Bikeway. The 25th anniversary of the Minuteman Bikeway is quickly approaching. This is a key opportunity to celebrate and increase awareness of this vital transportation artery through a variety of educational, honorary, and other types of events. Of course, such events will need to be planned, um, and the Bicycle Advisory Committee respectfully requests that the Board of Selectmen consider forming a 25th anniversary committee. Mr. Byrne. Um, a couple questions on this. Um, one, is this going to be a multi-community? Um, I see that it's a you know, bike ride through Lexington and Bedford as well, but are we gonna have representatives from those communities serve on this? This committee was going to be for Arlington only, and I think, I think um, Nate, Nat's um, approached the uh, other towns recently, and they haven't got anything planned yet, but it would, um, whether we do it as a, a tri-town or they do independent celebrations, and we have one celebration that all three committees organize, that will be up to the committee, I think. Um, but I think it's such a great facility and it's done great things for the town. I think it's, it's something that we should celebrate and um, publicize as much as possible. And uh, I would say, who, um, who do you envision being on mm. this committee now? Um, we have a couple of volunteers. Uh, Joey Glushko, uh, the former planners, uh, very enthusiastic to do it. Um, Jack Johnson also would like to be interested, the, my, my predecessor as chairman, who I think you all know well. Um, I think there was a proclamation last time we had a celebration on the rail trail that Mr. Greeley read that uh, celebrated Jack's involvement in these things. Um, I suspect someone from the planning department would be good to have too, and whoever the town manager or yourselves think would be good to have on this committee, we're, we want to be inclusive. We don't want to, we want to get as many people as possible to celebrate this uh, facility in Arlington that, that's been a great boon to the town. Mr. Chapman. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think to some degree, um, you know, this certainly could have been a working group or a subcommittee of ABAC, but uh, I, I felt, I think the planning director felt, and I, not to put words in your mouth, but I think Christopher felt that sort of having the imprimatur of the board saying this in and of itself is worth having a separate committee, and the board endorses that uh, just because of the importance and significance of the event, you know, would make this worthwhile. Thank you. I'll move approval. Moved by Mr. Burns, seconded by... A second. Mr. Kiro. I have a comment. Um, I wonder if we might want to move it, move approval for the committee, um, uh, the membership to be composed of, uh, I don't know, a committee of I don't know, up to 13 people to be recommended to us by, by ABEC, if that makes sense. Mr. Dunn. I, I was struggling with, with a similar thing and that I absolutely support the idea and I'm happy to do it. I'm trying to figure out what the right structure to give it to like help it succeed uh, because sometimes if we just, you know, sometimes you set the, the, paper bo the paper boats afloat and sometimes they sink and so you want to make sure that they're, <laughs> that they're well constructed. Yes, and I would like to include other people other than cyclists in this because yeah. it is used by the whole town mm -hmm. and I think it should be a town-wide celebration rather than just cyclists. So. Um, Mr. Carroll? So my recommendation for kind of augmenting the, the, the motion, it, my suggestion would be that we approve it as a committee of the, the Board of Selectmen, but at that an upcoming meeting, you come back and bring us a, a recommended list of, of appointees, individuals to be, to be appointed to the committee for our consideration. Mm -hmm. I, I'm cool. I would also say let's not cap it. Let's, okay. I mean, um, yeah. You know, especially with a volunteer, like this is going to be a very volunteer driven organization and this is one where we can, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Mr. Greeley. Well, while most are so used to seeing me in my spandex on my bike, um, 
I wonder whether or not Mr. Dunn would volunteer to work with the chairman and work with Adam Chapter Lane and let those three come back to us with a recommendation of the committee, because you really are the bike guy. I really think I that the audience be. is laughing at the idea of me in spandex, Mr. Greeley. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised spandex no one laughed when I said it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's many years I, ago. I would, be I would be happy to. I mean, yeah, I'd be very excited to do that. Is all that right. all right? Would you, you know, let three of you come up with the makeup of the committee versus that, that saying... That sounds yeah, perfectly fine. fine with me, yes. Yeah. That's fine. Yes, I think it's in agreement. Yes, we'll do that, and we'll be back at a, a future meeting with the, the um, and present to you the, the volunteer committee as such. Uh, I should know, but when is the actual 25th year? That is something I'm not precise to the actual date we're going to celebrate. I think we might might be better not to go. For when I remember, it might be a cool, wet. Yeah. We might be better having it in a nice, warm period yeah. where you get more people coming. I mean, it's... Um, it's a, probably a wobbly date, so let's pick a nice day. Okay. <laughs> the uh, oh, well, the date has a potential of being nice. Yeah. Town day is always good. You know, being on this board 28 years, I, I think a lot of people would be surprised how many residents came before us and begged us not to put a bike path along in there uh, because of concerns about crime and the rest. Whenever the state is, it's actually the 43rd year 18 years before we opened this bike path, Alan McLennan started the process, uh, and, and Lexington and Bedford followed, uh, but 18 years it took to get this, get, basically to get, which railroad line was it, but to get them to turn over this you know, line. For 18 years, can you imagine? The, the amount of paperwork was three of these huge uh, three ring binder notebooks that had to be filled out and you can imagine all that goes along with that and Alan McLennan uh, deserve, and, and every single property along that bike path has increased in value uh, uh, ever since so it's a tremendous boon to this community mm -hmm. okay, okay. Um, anybody else on a motion by Mr. Burns seconded by Mr. Kiro any further discussion if not all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. Opposed? unanimous vote Thank you very much. So just want to be clear, that motion is those three. Correct. Right, okay, thank you. Agenda item 16. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Mr. Thanks, Kevin. Arlington Public Art presentation uh, tabled from our September meeting. Adria Arch. Hi. Just name and address for the record, even though we all know you. Um, Adria Arch, 41 Mary Street. Um, hi, and uh, thanks for having us come and talk to you. We wanted to give you an update to the project that's going on in East Arlington. We're really excited in, in, to introduce to you again Cecily Miller, who is our, has been the public art consultant and has done, has absolutely exceeded our expectations, the Arlington Public Arts expectations for um, this fantastic project that's taken place in East Arlington. And have you, have some of you seen some of the murals up, up and down yet? So really thrilled. And um, she's going to tell a little bit about um, where we are, where we stand now, and uh, what's coming up in the future. So we're just for getting it up on the monitor, so because a lot of this presentation is in pictures. Um. We just find a flaw in the monitor plan, Joe. Yeah. No. I'll stand in the corner. But you, I think. No, we have it in here. But you, yeah, yeah, you also, you yeah. So d I wanted to just recap a little bit from the last time that I was here presenting to you because that was before we had designed what our large project was going to be, um, that our original project goals were developing a capstone for the street improvements along Mass Avenue and to enhance the sense of identity, community, and place in East Arlington and to offer something that really celebrated the town-wide arts scene. Um, and then we had come up with this whole bunch of um, themes and ideas from our community engagement process, and quite a few of them show up in our final uh, product. Um, and second part of our community, nope, can you go back for a second? Nope, forward, yeah. 
<laughs> so uh, our community engagement was partly community meetings, but also these events and activities that we held, sort of pop-up um, activities, one with a theme of play, one the Fox Festival, and then a little installation at Spy Pond of a Fox family made of recycled, repurposed vinyl banners. Now we can go to the next slide. So then we, um, we determined that uh, our primary large-scale project for East Arlington would be the East Arlington Story Project. And this was a, a temporary art project that would create portraits of some of the local independent small business owners and people who work in the stores in East Arlington, the specialty stores that give the neighborhood such a great character. Um, and to try to get a diverse cross-section. So this is not about who is the best, it's about an interesting assortment of stories. So we have people who are third generation in the same business and people who made a complete career transformation and took a risk to do something that they love for the first time. Um, so let's see, we can go to the next slide and this just uh, introduces again the three artists in our collaborative team, Cedric Douglas and Julia Roth, who are founders of something called Uptruck, um, and Nilu Muchala, who is a resident here in Arlington, who had done a project called I Am Arlington a couple of years ago, a post um, interviewing people about their thoughts about Arlington. So now we can go to the next one. So our team of artists basically started at Feast of the East in, in East Arlington, and they, we all kind of hit the sidewalk and just started asking people to share a memorable moment that had happened in an East Arlington business. So again, it's not like, where is the best ice cream? But it's more, where have you had important events, friendships? Um, what, what, what memorable things have <coughs> happened inside uh, the storefronts in East Arlington? So now we can go to the next one. Also at the Feast of the East, we made this great community mural. Anyone <coughs> could add a shape to this kind of colorful mural. And um, then we donated it to the Fox Library where it hung in the lobby and promoted the fact that we were looking for, um, for entries, for nominations. So the next one shows you how we had a little box set up at the counter of the Fox and asked the librarians to talk it up. and got some handwritten uh, nominations and some online nominations. And you can see this is a, like a young person, probably from the library, who nominated this, saying that they nominated the Arlington Diner because they take their grandparents there every year. <laughs> so now we can go to the next slide. Um, a, a portion of our project, a large portion, ended up on the Fox Library, so we had some specific goals for the imagery on the library. Um, we wanted to celebrate the library as a community resource and neighborhood anchor. We heard a lot from people, I'm sure this is no surprise to any of you, how much they love the Fox Library and what an important space it is. Um, we also wanted to put a kind of title page for the project that would introduce people to the fact that something is going on. We wanted to highlight the Little Fox resale shop um, which just seems like a model that many other communities could be emulating in that it keeps, uh, keeps donated items out of the landfill and makes quality um, books, clothes, et cetera, available for kids uh, at affor and families at affordable prices. We also wanted to tell the story of the Friends of the Fox and encourage that kind of community support of the library and host some adjacent businesses. So now next slide. This is our title. It's kind of the introduction to the project. It's sort of our a little trademark. And hiding behind that sign is Adria Arch. <laughs> so this is sort of a tribute to the woman who behind the scenes has really done so much for public art in Arlington. Um, in the next slide, this is a sketch. That, uh, part of the way that our process worked is that um, Cedric and Nilu would do interviewing, and then Cedric would do a design based on what they found out in the interview. So this is Emily Caniff. Um, she does a story hour, and she organized a group of kids for this photo shoot. And um, her quote is, I think, really lovely, and will be put in that thought balloon that's empty right now. 
I don't ever want to retire. I love being here so much. Families really treasure this library. I see a lot of the same kiddos and grown-ups every week. They're very loyal. I really get to know them. It's like a big family here, the ultimate community center. It's hard to imagine my life without it. I think a lot of people would echo that feeling. So then also on the library uh, are two creative businesses, Clay Dreams, which was started by Rosemary Ardania. And um, her story was also wonderful. One of the things that she, that came up when we were talking to her was she said, am I an artist? You know, I can paint and draw, but really I'm more of a people person and I can help other people to be that artist. And it was clear how much it meant to her when a kid or adult working in her space could express themselves through clay. Next one. Um, artware on the left, uh, and that's on the right is the mural for the Little Fox Shop. And we can go to the next one. This is a beautiful example of the nomination process where I was saying we asked people to nominate a business with a memory. Someone told a story in uh, of about her mother lost her husband of 72 years. A few months later, I took her to Artware. It was a risky venture. Even in the best of times, my mom's not a big shopper. And although at 92, 92, she still has a great figure. She's often critical of how things look on her. I knew that Jerry and her staff are always honest and will <coughs> tell you if something doesn't look quite right. So when they raved about how things looked on my mom, I believed them and so did she. She walked out of the store with two new outfits, and for the first time since my father's death, I knew that my mom still had an appetite for life and that she would be all right. It's just um, choked, chokes me up. <laughs> um, and one thing that's great about that story is a lot of people might say, oh, you know, fashion, clothing, it's kind of frivolous, but it's really not. It gets to our identity and... Um, Okay, so there you see the little fox shop. And the next one are some pictures from our installation process. This is Cedric posing with the wonderful family that runs Olympic Pizza. It was very clear in the interview with them that that whole shop is about family. The kids grew up doing their homework there. Um, everybody in the neighborhood knew them. So definitely that mural had to have the whole family. Next one. And that's... Tom, the owner, standing by his mural, and he loves it. We've gotten really positive response from the people who are um, in the portraits. Next one. Um, Larry Maida is a uh, third generation pharmacist. His son is in pharmacy school, and he's um, retooling his pharmacy to be a compounding pharmacy so that he can continue to survive as an independent mm -hmm. pharmacy in the world of chain pharmacies. Um, and again, you see Cedric taking the photos that would end up in the, in the large wheat-pasted portrait. Next one. And this, I wish we had on videotape uh, Larry's reaction when he walked out and saw his portrait. He was just, he kept saying, it's so big, it's so big, <laughs> it's so big. It was, I think, really exciting. And uh, we really believe that a major part of this project is is honoring these people and the interactions that happen between the artist team and the local business people where people are really heard and uh, what, you know, the meaning of that we're trying to capture something of the meaning of their lives and their life's work, really, and recognize it. Okay, so the next one, uh, Zaz Pizza was actually the first place that stepped up and said, yes, we could use their wall when we were in the very beginning, and I'm very grateful to them for that vote of confidence. And they're hosting um, Cambridge Typewriter Repair, which if you've never been there, you have to check out. Tom Furrier has a collection of typewriters dating back to the 1870s. Um, and then um, Jeff and Fabiola, Jeff the general manager and Fabiola server at Zaz who originally came from Nicaragua to this country. And the next one. Uh, okay, so then this I'm gonna leave you with what's next. Please put November 5th on your calendar if you can, a Saturday from one to three, we're gonna do a walking tour with the artists and everyone is invited. And a lot of the business people will do a kind of open house you can expect to probably have some pizza. Um, Mr. Grilling. 
<laughs> Samples, Mr. Gurley. <laughs> you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And uh, also try out the typewriters and so on. So it, it's a party for them. It's a party for the town, for the neighborhood. Um, we will be combining 800 word port written portraits that you didn't really see in this presentation uh, that Nilu Muchala is writing up from the interviews and publishing a zine that has those written portraits and documentation of the whole process. And then we'll be taking everything down most likely in early December. Um, this is kind of an organic process, so we don't really know how long wheat pasting lasts. It depends on the weather conditions and light conditions, and uh, we just thought it was probably best to take them down before the deep freeze. So that's the goal. Uh, and we'll just end with project supporters. Um, in addition to the town of Arlington, we've really we've raised funds from a variety of sources in order to put this together, including the Arlington Cultural Council, the Friends of the Fox Library, the New England Foundation for the Arts, the Massachusetts Cultural Council, and um, as I said, of course, the town of Arlington. And then we've had a media sponsorship from the Arlington Advocate and Wicked Local Arlington, which have run the they're running the 800-word uh, portraits every week in the paper so as a way to get them out broadly to people <coughs> so thank you for your time and uh, I, I, I hope you'll stroll around even if you don't make it to the open house talk to people the business people about how the project went for us let us know if you hear anything um, and thank you for your support Mr. Thank Kiro. You. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cecily. Thank you, Adria, and everybody else who was uh, involved in this. I, I love this project for so many reasons. And it's not just the artistic expression. I love that you took so much time to reach out to the community. I know you had a couple of workshops to really reach out and hear people's stories as you're kind of laying the groundwork for this, and then all of the postcards um, with people's stories. Um, I love that you highlight um, our independent businesses, which are really, you know, the strength of the of really the the uh, business community here in Arlington. It's, it's something that that some communities, you know, don't enjoy the way that the way that we do here. So you know, so to say, thank you for learning from the community and the people in the community, and thank you for teaching others about <coughs> the, the people who really built up, um, you know, East Arlington in, 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 in this case. So. I haven't seen all of them. I've seen some of them, so I look forward. We're to, still to installing, so, yeah. so you can you'll see a few more forward. going up in the next couple of weeks, Mr. Dunn. When and where is the open house? So it's November fifth, from one to three. We'll meet at the Fox Library, and it'll be we'll be walking from site to site and stopping in at the the local businesses. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Greeley. Yeah. Just and one, one last thing that um, I've noticed, and I was out helping um, install the murals, that people stop and they talk to each other, you know, strangers. And that's, I think, one of the best things about this whole thing is people stopping, talking, and saying, wow, who's that? Oh, do you know that person? Oh, I remember when I was a kid, I used to go there. So that's been really lovely, too. Mr. Grilly? Yeah, well, uh, Sean, <coughs> can I ask you, was what we saw also shown to the television audience at home? Oh, no. <laughs> yep, I'm sorry. Well, he's probably zoomed it. I don't know how much she can pick up the. It was on that screen that it was uh, active. I don't know if it did. Yeah. Okay. Is it on that screen? Just, just curious. I mean, congratulations, Mrs. Mahan, that we have this working and up and mm. you're going to dog in the sock more, about so that. that. But yeah. with all her talking about, and these are fantastic to look at. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but. Why take them down? Are you taking them down to save them? I mean, what? Do, the, what? The, the, the method that we used is almost like a giant Xerox yeah. on yeah. paper, right. and then we trimmed it out and we put it up with wallpaper paste. Right. It won't really, it won't last through a winter. We could <laughs> leave them up, and they might start peeling off yeah. or fading, and then it would be. In some ways, that can be actually kind of. A nice aspect of right. That's what I'm. Why not? But it know? can also end up looking shabby. You know. Well, I don't want that, and I don't want someone to be hurt with the dripping on oh, them. Oh yeah, no, I don't think. But I wonder why not leave them up until they do start to peel off, and then we should remove them. But uh, anyhow, I, it's just I, so great. I, I hate mm. losing them. I, I I I agree, and <laughs> I think that one issue is just. Uh, this project has been much more ambitious than any of us realized. We're all working incredibly hard to get it all up, and so it's taken longer. I mean, even 
this seems silly, but even the amount of processor speed that it takes on a computer to print out a, a artwork that large sure. takes hours. And so um, it would have been nice if they'd been up a little sooner, I think, in the season. But it is what it is. You know, it was, a um, like I say, an ambitious project, and we all learned a lot. And if we wait too long, then when we power wash them off, the water will, will freeze on the sidewalk. Okay. okay. So that's. So yeah. with your artistic eye, can you see the five of us <laughs> put across the front of this building? Absolutely. <laughs> and, and track the you accidents that. that happened as people drive. Oh, excellent work. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. you. Mr. Chaplain. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I first wanted to point out the, the presentation, if it wasn't viewed at home, is on the website, uh, as are all the Selectman's materials. So any, anybody can have access to take a look at this. Uh, but <clears throat> what, the point I really wanted to make was I really wanted to commend Cecily's efforts to the board. Mm. Um, a, a quick historical recap. Uh, town meeting supported funding to be able to hire and bring Cecily on board two years ago. Last year, when funding for this project that you just saw before you was requested, it was unsuccessful at the Finance Committee. So rather than giving up, Cecily wrote grants, she pursued private fundraising, and was able to accomplish what was presented uh, to the board tonight. So I think that's really a tremendous achievement on Cecily's part and the team that Cecily's worked with. And I think it's worth mentioning that this was all done with really, you know, sleeves rolled up and a lot of hard work to get it done. Thank you so much. Thank you. It looks so effortless. Uh, can I take a motion to receive by so move. Mr. Kiro, seconded by Second. Mr. Byrne? Um, any further discussion? Mm -hmm. If not, on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Byrne, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you so much. Our sincere thanks. I can't wait to see everything. And the typewriter it was featured like on Chronicle within the past three months. Did you see? I think it was Chronicle. Yeah. And I think they said not only does he have clientele nationally, but even globally and you know because um, he's really a very unique business in terms of but some people have you know smith corona ibm selector 2 etc cetera, etc cetera, you know and, and, and the backwards 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 key <laughs> his, his range from, he said, uh, um microphone okay and then sorry he he mentioned that um teenagers are totally into typewriters Type, yeah and yeah, that last christmas he had two separate fathers come in on two separate days and say, I have the coolest daughter and the only thing on her Christmas list is a typewriter and a ukulele. <laughs> D different families. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but also the uh, Pulitzer winning prize uh, historian David McCullough mm -hmm. writes all of his books on typewriters. Yeah. I mean, 400 page books mm -hmm. and Tom services that typewriter, to one typewriter even. Mm. So yeah, it's pretty It's a great shop if you can go in. Just listening to the owner of, of who his clientele is, it's fantastic. But thank you so much to both of you. Um, agenda item 17, presentation, yeah. presentation preventative maintenance strategy of facilities department. Wow, you put some words there together for me, Mr. Chapdelaine. We have our town manager and our facilities director, Ruthie Bennett. So I'll give just a, a uh, few brief remarks, and then I'm going to go work the computer for, for Ruthie. But, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, at, at the request of the chair, uh, we have Ruthie Bennett, who's our facilities director here tonight, really to, to give the board an update on the progress that's been made in just about the first year of the facilities department being an independent operating department with a specific focus on the, the, the words uh, included on the agenda item, really the, the, the upgrades to the preventative maintenance strategy and how we process that uh, through the facilities department. So, nope. Oh. Maybe we got a presentation. Well, I guess what I'll say is I will turn it over to Ruthie as soon as it uh, as soon as it starts to run. I think I might be going to run the computer. You you, you had it there. Yeah. Just hit play show. We probably can't swivel that, right? It actually does swivel, um, but, but we maybe the audience can't see it too. Yeah. yeah. 
that probably yeah, doesn't help. Yeah. Yeah. As long as I can yeah. see it too. So. Yeah. <laughs> can you see that? If you're not, facilities <laughs> director. Uh, Ruthie Bennett, director of the facilities department. Thank you very much for um, having me come speak to you tonight. So uh, if you could advance to the next one. Um, so what I've done is put together a preventive maintenance team from all um, the different parts of the facilities department. Um, specifically, Kyle Wade is who are our new in-house HVAC tech. Um, and he is working specifically on all the preventive maintenance we need to do for all of our HVAC equipment, which is quite a lot uh, and a very big part of our, our asset group. Um, Eileen Messina, who's the facilities admin assistant, and she is creating all of the preventive maintenance schedules, and I'll show you those uh, as we go forward, and all the contact information. Let me just say one thing I'm really trying to do is institutionalize all of the knowledge we have from the staff that's been here for a very long time, and also new staff like Kyle, who literally started last Thursday, so that everything that we know and need to know about all of our assets is in a software program that we own, information is always available to us. So this will be our information for as long as we need it and accessible to us at all times. Um, the maintenance staff, so they actually do a lot of our preventive maintenance, and they're giving us a lot of information about how to do the work. They're also going to be responsible for talking to the contractors who come in and do some of our preventive maintenance work. And then Jeremy Brandle, who's a supervisor of custodians, and he's working with us on um, the grounds equipment and supplies. And so this team is being led by Mark Biano, who probably could do all of this by himself because he's been here forever and knows everything. But again, I'm really trying to use all of our resources and literally take what Mark knows and put it into our software program so that we all have access to it. Um, we bought um, a preventive maintenance software from a company called School Dude, which also we have a work order system from them, and I'll show you later capital forecast. They all work together in sync. So everything we have is in the software program and it's our information. Next slide, please. Um, so I just wanna show you a couple of things that we do uh, in terms of the preventive maintenance. Um, we're working now with all the school and town buildings. We're adding the library, the police, uh, sorry, community safety building will be coming on board. We're working with Chief Jefferson for all the fire stations. So we look at every single piece of equipment. Probably over 50% are done by outside contractors, like fire extinguisher check has to happen by a third party. Um, and I'll show you also some of the stuff that we do internally. Even down to window cleaning and pest control. All of this happens on a consistent basis. And the value for us is that it keeps up the value of all the assets in the town. Next slide, please. We also have schools preventive maintenance. What's really important for the school side is that each school has to be tracked individually in terms of what, we, um, what funding we use, so how much money we, pay, we do for school. So although all the schools get the same kind of preventive maintenance, each school is tracked separately. And again, the software program helps us to do that very simply. Uh, next slide, please. And then this is some of, some of the internal PM work. Uh, what's really important about this is some of this was getting done, some of the time, not all of the time. Right now, we have the, the Fergal O'Brien, who's our plumber, coming to me and saying, we really should be cleaning the art sinks, the traps. I looked at him, why? Because if I don't clean them, by the middle of December, the art teachers are screaming, and then I have to do it on the you know, vacation of the week, and they're... So really, like, basic things that weren't happening consistently. So now, our plumber is very busy in the summer, getting everything ready for the school, but we have it scheduled, he knows what he needs to do. And the maintenance staff is also giving me information on what we should do. We're not just telling them, we're really using their knowledge of being in the schools and the buildings all the time. So it's, it's a sort of a, a feedback back and forth. Next slide, please. So um, I'll run through this very quickly. I'm a little bit um, geeky about it. I love all this stuff. So you, you, know, <laughs> you don't want to hear much. We can, we can go through it faster. But what's really important is the way that we create the preventive maintenance uh, action again, has all the information that we need, and it's accessible to anyone who's doing the work. It isn't just one person, the HVAC guy, who knows it. Anybody who needs to can go in and, and uh, understand what needs to be done. So next slide, please. We um, basically figure out what classification it belongs to, and that way we can also sort what's plumbing, what's electrical. Is there enough for one plumber, too much for one plumber? This will help us understand that. Next slide, please. Um, so the, this is one of the most important pieces, the job startup. For something like a fire extinguisher, which is a third party, it's very simple. We'll contact someone else. But when it's something that we do internally or something we have to watch that someone else does, like a fire extinguisher and what kind of um, seal do we need to get when they leave, we write down, again, all the information in here. So it's available to us, but also it's detailed. We don't forget anything. If you need to bring certain tools to look at a certain boiler at the Bishop School, which you, which you do, we write it in here. So before they go out to the job, they know what they need for each 
each piece of work. Next slide, please. Um, oh, right, sorry. So this is, again, what we do is the person who's responsible for doing the PM gets the assignment. So if Eileen Messina has to call the contractor, it goes to her, it gives her information, who she should call, who from our team is gonna meet with that person. It's all listed here. If it goes straight to the plumber to do it, it goes directly to him through his iPad, he gets it in, a, in an email. Next slide, please. Um, and then this is frequency. Most things are annual, many things are biannual. Depends on what time of year. So here we can um, write specifically what it, when it needs to be done and how often it needs to be done, the frequency. Next slide. And then there's a summary for each PM. Again, you can go back and look at each individual preventive maintenance action. Next slide. Um, so what, get, what we get is a master list of all the PM work. All that information is in there. What's really important is when the person finishes the action, the cleaning of the boiler or the replacing of the filters, they write all their notes in the PM. So we have that forever. What happened, what didn't work, how we should change it next time, what we did the year before. Again, all the information, particularly from our guys who are doing the work, is all listed here. Next slide, please. Um, and what comes to each person who's doing a preventive maintenance work order is something like this. It tells them what to do, it tells them where to go. They're independent, self-sufficient, they get it on their iPad, they go out and do it. If they're in one building, they can look at all the preventive maintenance they need to do in that building. Very efficient way of working, and I have to tell you that they really appreciate it, because they're less wondering of what they have to do and when. It's much more set out for them. Next slide, please. And then again on the bottom, it lists what you should be doing, what you need to do, the, the job. Next slide. Um, it also gives us the option to do a monthly PM overview, and we can sort it by who's doing the work, when the work is being done, again, to help us understand what's the, you know, the workload of the staff. The summer is extremely busy for a lot of the maintenance guys, but, you, you know, what are they doing and when? So the software really assists us in terms of understanding how heavy is the workload, who's doing, who's doing what and when. Next slide, please. Um, we can also put it into Excel, and so we can sort it by cost. We're trying, starting to put cost into the preventive maintenance measures. Um, we can sort it by who's doing it. Just very flexible software program. Next slide. Uh, one of the things that I, I love, and this is uh, the geeky side, but all the information that I just told you about that we put in the work orders, there's actually a template from school due. And so if I have to change 50 univents in every school, each one gets the same thing. I can put it in one time, I can copy and paste, and then it gets uploaded. If you go to the next slide, please back into the work order system. So we don't have to write it a million times. It's much more simple to do it on a spreadsheet. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, just really briefly, we're also looking at capital forecasts, trying to look further out on all of our buildings. Um, it's a similar concept in terms of inputting the data and showing up for us what we need. So if you go to the next slide, we started with the Thompson, because we have all the drawings. It's much more simple. It's all online. <coughs> um, and so this is a list of what's called building components which is 20 different building components that came with the software, so we didn't have to create it. There's a whole algorithm, I could talk to you about it offline if you'd like to know how it works, but we put in what the piece of equipment was and what it cost when we bought it. And then there's a whole projection of inflation and 20 years later and where we are in the you know, Boston area and how much it could cost us. So if you go to the next slide, there's a very basic representation of what the Thompson's gonna cost to keep maintaining it from a 20-year plan, not a preventive maintenance plan, but 20 years uh, in there. And this is just representative, it's not, not detailed yet. Um, next slide, and then we're actually, again, something I think is really exciting for us is um, GNR is the contractor on the Stratton renovation project, and so they are putting in the data in a template for every piece of equipment they're putting in the Stratton school. And then overnight when we import the data, if you can go to the next slide, please, it comes out as capital forecast already in the software. So we don't have to go look at every single boiler and write it down, every single hot water heater. Um, the, system, the, the software program updates it for us. So the Stratton, the Gibbs, the new high school, the work that we have to do is very, very minimal. The contractor puts in the work into the template and it comes back to us in the uh, equipment, um, in the capital forecast. Um, next slide, I think, is the last one. I just wanted to briefly say, I know there was a question about um, the cleanliness and the maintenance of bathrooms in schools, and I just want to speak briefly to that. I'm happy to talk more about it at here or at another time. Um, so particularly at the high school, we have had a lot of challenges with the bathrooms there. Right now we are three people short in our custodial staff, but as of today we probably have two of the three ready to come on board, and I'd say within less than a month we'll be fully staffed. Once we're fully staffed, we will be able to check 
every bathroom during the school day, without a question. Right now, we check them all at the end of the day and we clean them, but in terms of uh, supplies, we will certainly be able to check them every day. We did actually a year ago double the amount of supplies that are in each bathroom, so toilet paper and the hand towels and soap dispensers, to try to keep up with the use. Um, but what we can commit to now, as we're waiting for our staff to kind of get fully online, is that we will definitely um, check and restock the heavily used bathrooms, which are right across from the cafeteria, at least you know, one or two times a day to kind of keep up with, like I said, the heavy usage. So um, I'm sorry to speak so quickly, but <laughs> there's a lot of information. So thank you very much. I do the exact same thing, because I want to get it all out. You know, and everyone's like, don't tell me the history of the hammer and the nail. Just give me the hammer, <laughs> Mr. Kiro. But I appreciate much. that. I'm, I'm with you. Sorry, Mr. Kiro. Thank you very much. Thank you for this presentation. I think this is um, exactly the direction we needed to go. Um, with preventive maintenance. I mean, in my own professional life, we live and die by ticketing systems. It's the only way to really, you know, guarantee accountability, to know what your backlog is, and to, to manage through that. I think that, you know, when we created the facilities department, I mean, this came about because, you know, as we all know, we're all facing very large uh, building projects, for one thing. This is one reason, <coughs> and one of the most common questions we get is why should I support you know, a large building initiative if we're not going to properly maintain the facilities. It's a very common question. I'm sure everybody up here has, has gotten that question at, at one time or another. So I think being able to demonstrate that and use, use a system like this um, is uh, very important. Um, and I want to thank you for preemptively addressing the, the sanitation at, at the bathrooms. I raised that issue. I have two daughters. It's very personal to me. This predates you. It's been an intractable problem, and I think in the past we've had a situation where the school department and, and the town has been able to go like this. So I, it's with a lot of hope that I approach this now that we have a facilities department. But um, I will say that um, I, I just asked to check my memory before I left, left the house tonight, and my daughter said, you don't want to describe it on TV. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's literally that bad. So I, I really appreciate that you're going to take it up. And, uh, and maybe stay on top of that with maybe some regular checks, not only for supplies, but, but emptying some of the receptacles and um, maybe checking the hot water and such. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Mr. Grayley? Yeah, so uh, really thorough, excellent work. Thank you. A couple of questions. So this summer, a couple of times, the air conditioning failed, at least in our offices. And we actually, the staff had to go home. They couldn't work uh, in that kind of heat. So how is that repair handled? That's not under preventative. It's happened. It's, it, it, it broke. Right, right. right. So how's that handled? So actually, I have two ways of answering that. In terms of an emergency, which that is, um, before we had our in-house HVAC tech, we would probably send out our electrician to see if he could troubleshoot it. If not, we would call our third-party contractor. Mm -hmm. um, that's the way we would handle it, and they usually have a, an hour or less response time, I would say, particularly when it's heating season. Um, but my real goal is that as we do preventive maintenance and we have our <coughs> own HVAC person who's looking at every single building, that those emergencies come up less often because when he's out there changing a filter, he's looking at the rest of the piece of the equipment. Where when we call a third party to come in and fix this one filter and this one belt, that's all they look at. They don't look at it a broader vision of, is this piece of equipment really running correctly? You know, and, and why did it stop? What else is going on? So my vision is that as we pick up preventive maintenance and we do it consistently and the information is available consistently so we could look back and say, you know, the town hall last year also, the air conditioning wasn't working on the days when it was 90 degrees. So we need to know that and get ahead of that because next week we're gonna have 100 degrees and we need to make sure the town hall has been looked at. So I don't have an answer specifically of what I would do as much as I want to make sure we take the information we're learning so the town hall has a problem when it's 95 degrees outside and use it to prevent the 100 degree three days in a row for the AC here and not being able to, to keep up. So that's my, my, my long-term answer. So, uh, and very thorough uh, in terms of what you've laid out, uh, how much will all this preventative maintenance cost? So there were a few um, numbers there. I saw a few, yeah. Right. Um, you know, I don't want to answer that with an exact dollar. I, I will say that I feel like we are going to save money by having this in-house HVAC person when we had a third party to call them to change a filter cost $125 because they had to drive here and it was a flat fee. Um, 
I, I would say it's thousands of dollars just to do regular preventive maintenance. There's no question. Um, do I think it's more than $25,000 on a regular year? I'm not sure. I'm okay, not sure. just curious. Right. Yeah. It's kind of in that range. I also will say, before I sort of get caught saying a particular number, we don't know everything yet, right? Because we've never, I mean, the boilers, the air conditioners, the chillers, those are our biggest mm -hmm. pieces of equipment. We've never serviced them ourselves. So I only know what I've paid our third party contractor, which is over $100,000. So my answer is I'll know more as we take it on. Okay, thank you. Mr. Brown? Um, just a clarifying question. So for the school dude, is that also used on town properties as well, or is this yes. just being used on schools? It's, we, do school, we do school buildings and town buildings. They're all absolutely the same to us. Okay. Right. So the capital forecast, the work order, and the preventive mm -hmm. maintenance, everything is used is across the board. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mr. Dunn. Uh, thank you very much. I think this was a very interesting presentation, and I think uh, I really, I thinking back to the proposal to create this Department and you know the progress that's been made over the years. I'm really excited about it. I think it's it's, it's excellent. Uh, you might consider I don't know asking um, Al Tosky <coughs> or Charlie Foskett if they wanted at the Finance Committee or Capital Planning Committee because uh, they're geeks too and uh, they would also. I think that this is the type of thing where they. Uh, um, I mean, it, it's up to them. You know, but whether they want their committees or you know or their committees whether they want to see it. But I think that they would be. Uh, fascinated for the same reasons that you are, because it is about the nuts and bolts about how you're, um, you know, how you're using town money in its most effective way, and try rather, you know, managing the maintenance as opposed to the emergencies of it. So, thank you very much. Absolutely. Can I just add to that, Sumi? But also the permanent town building committee. Yes, you're the right. Projects that yep. they're going to be overseeing. I'm going to send you. Everyone. I, I yeah. Yeah. I'm on it, that committee, yeah. so they know what I'm oh, doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and and I, I can't. Oh. And I can't remember if there was, when we created the facilities director position, if there was any sort of report back to town meeting, whether it be providing a link off the town website, something that's included in the written materials or whatever. You know, there, I don't think there was any ex okay, that's fine. explicit, but, you know, a, a, yeah. a written report, narrative report couldn't be a bad thing. Yeah, I, I just would like it, and I, I want to thank Ms. Bennett Ruthie um, and the town manager. He'll say it in a very polite way. I've been a really, I was going to say, pesky little gnat, but now we have an employee named that name, but, um, so I can't do that. But I've really been, you know, bugging him when, uh, you know, one of the luxuries of chair is you get to have, you know, your own tickler system in your head in terms of um, things that you'd like to see come forth as well as, and a lot of it was to A, have this position and really um, advertise its success and its uh, usefulness as well as, you know, similar to with debt exclusions and even with the Minuteman. You know, I was up in uh, Burlington and it was a couple of um, retirees who served in the armed forces. I am in trying to run into Wendy's to get something and they're talking about the Minuteman vote and, and you know, never maintain any of these schools. And I said, well, here in Arlington, so that sort of thing. And it's, this is something that we're all into and I had equated it to and my colleagues and the town manager have heard this far too many times. but. I started out working one of my first jobs. It was NET and T and AT and T, and I was just an administrative clerk, loading clerk, whatever. And back then, it was Lotus One, Two, Three, and D Base Three. And um, I set out because I was trying to get more money, get a raise, get a bonus, and I was just a good secretary, you know, nothing more. And I wrote in those programs because I had linemen and women inside and outside trunks, transformers, senders, poles, um, and I would have every piece of equipment, every craft. When problems came in, you know, routine maintenance, whatever, it would have a number. <clears throat> and each of those numbers would go to what person. I, they, they can do one through six, whatever, as well as time. And I said, you know, back then it took me, you know, a couple of months working with those two different programs. And I'm like, knowing what's out there now, why, why am I not seeing this? And this is exactly what I was talking about because I'm, like, so into this. Um, just a couple, and so I really do appreciate this because it, it was driving me nuts because I'm like, oh, if I only had the technology we have now back when I started out in the 80s in the phone company, but I wouldn't have gotten a bonus because they end up adopting the program that I wrote and like, say la vie. But um, I just wanted to ask you, um, and we scrolled through some of the different screens and I saw the 1 through 15 or 1 through 19 categories of opening <coughs> it and classifying it, et cetera. Um, I was wondering, um, does it have any sort of automatic tickler file in the sense that um, 
I, I see some of the categories are listed as employees and numbers, outstanding work, work completed or closed. So my thing is, you can do anything with the school due program, but is it um, administratively driven that somebody goes in and requests and says, give me either all the you know open work, give me all the closed work for this particular piece of equipment or this person, or is this some sort of automatic computerized tickler thing, or is it a combination thereof that you have to do that? You can actually have either. So I can go in and ask for all the PM on the Bishop School that's not completed, or I can have a report that comes out every week or every month on the Bishop School. So it, it can happen however you want to do it. You can get reports sent you know, automatically that have specific criteria in them. And what's really great about School Dude is the criteria are the same in, in all the different programs. So we're, we're using the same language all the time when we look at all the work orders and the preventive maintenance. So I can do that. I can Monday morning have a report of all the PMs that are, have been generated but not completed. Mm -hmm. I can have a list of all the PMs that are going to be generated that week. Mm -hmm. Or I can have a specific school or specific equipment. You know, all the boilers, what's their schedule? Mm -hmm. It's very, very facile, and the uh, um, school dude is great because any training is free. You call them, and they'll do a webinar with you. So anything that we need from them, they've been really helpful in, in, in um, specializing now. I'm thinking of the word tailoring it to mm -hmm. what we're looking for. Okay. And what I, I would do myself, I'm not asking you to do that, is um, I would work on because there's from time to time, and sometimes it might be me asking the town manager to see if I can get this information from you, or it might be just like talk to him about something and he already knows from seeing reports from you. So I'm not saying, I'm not asking you that particular request, I'm not making that. Um, but sometimes in the future, you know, there might be a certain area, and I always say to the town manager and anybody else, if it's too exhaustive and too <coughs> cumbersome and doesn't exist, I'm not asking for, right. you know, unless you think it's something. The other thing is, um, Using the Stratton School as an example, as um, we're getting, uh, along with the facilities, uh, new, new equipment, and you said uh, it was a GNR, yeah. it's, it's also plugging into the school dude program and, and inputting information about equipment. Um, I imagine, you know, you have the 15 or 19 categories, but if you wanted to customize it or tailor it and add a few more, uh, whether it's, a, you know, I was just thinking when we would get a piece of equipment besides problems and things that needed to be done, you know, we'd carry it out and have a tickler file for, you know, all the things we needed to do to make sure we maintain the warranty all the way through and when they should be done. So if you need to add another, obviously you can do things like that. Right. They have like a, a general description box where you can put anything in there. So you can describe mm -hmm. that piece of equipment however you mm -hmm. want to or, you know, there's actually a place for warranty. How long is the warranty? Who the warranty is with? Oh, okay. Cause contact why. information. Right. You didn't see that. I was... Uh -huh. No, no. <laughs> what, what I'm going to do is, is probably, you know, in one of my many future conversations with the town manager, just say if I can just get maybe one little snapshot of, yeah. um, just just because I love that stuff. Because yeah. I'm, you know, I'll I'm, send you lots of snapshots. I'm union of it. and it's... I'm maintenance, and so uh, and then um, the last thing I would ask, and I don't know if it's actually something that if you wanted to do it, if you can do it, does School Dude also have a program? When I was thinking of my craftsmen and women, I could also pull up. Um, for a problem list, I could see Ruthie Bennett, the, this is her skill set. You can send her out for a trunk, a transformer. You can't put her on a mainframe or a pole. So she can do one, two, not three, four. Does it have any kind of capacity like that? And I don't know if that would be useful. Like the only way that we found it useful with the phone company is if I would do a report of, you know, maintenance, um, regular as well as problem, mm -hmm. um, enacted and then it would list all the different you know problem list you know you have to be a 4 11 or a 12 yeah. and then I had a tickler system so that if I wasn't paying attention and a lot of employees with the phone company that I lost an awful <coughs> I lost like three or four men and women that really their main things were the heavy hitting trouble and I remember they were 4 7 11 and 12 you know um, so right. so I'm not asking that it should do that right. I just wanted to put put that before I you I think we there's there's fewer options we have electrician plumber and carpenters oh, okay you know, so in that sense we don't have as many options as you had all right. it's, all right. it's like already assigned to the plumber I'm Once the geek the I want more I want more <laughs> no but thank you very much um, uh, did anybody else uh, is there a motion Mr. Grilly well, Second. Seconded by Mr. Curo. A motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Curo. Any further discussion? 
If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? And if I could, this was going to be part of my new business and possibly Mr. Chapterlane's, and it's just because my mind is mush right now, and we're talking facilities. The concession stand, does that fall under the facilities director purview at all? It's, it's so ambiguous for me right now, and I'm trying to work with whoever I'm, I'm working with the town manager, but it's just so vague, and I just kind of want to get that. So the latest is that the, um, one of the two personnel that are acting as school CFO and the athletic director met with Jim Feeney to put together a plan. So they have a plan to get things cleaned up, and I see the role the, of the facilities department has whatever they need to get done, the facilities department will schedule and get done. But school administration is taking the lead in getting it up and running. So we, we have that list from the Department of Public Health. I've talked to uh, Dr. Bodie, and we have actually done probably the top three, which were very critical. There's about five more that we're talking to uh, the school department about. And will that eventually go into the system and fall under you, the concession stand? The reason I say that is it's a kind of a little personal ink for me because having fundraised for lots of things out there, including that concession stand, for like the first six or seven years, I oversaw it and had the maintenance and had everything set up and had a maintenance plan shocking and <laughs> had a system if Paul Rosie called up and said, hey, I had to put a temporary PVC pipe because that thing's leaking. And it really was minimal amounts of maintenance to keep that concession stand going. And three years ago, the school administration asked if I could, quote, unquote, turn it over to them, which I said, fine, Forrest Gump, one less thing. You know, I said, you know, as long as you, you know, and I'm not trying to cast aspersions or anything like that, but I just know what it took for me. And maybe it was a big deal because I'm kind of used to, you know, organizing and maintenance and things like that. But I'm, I'm telling you, some years, if it was two, three hundred dollars total in terms of maintenance, if you stayed on top of, you know, do it, I had the weekly things everybody had to do, I had the, you know, food sink stuff everybody <coughs> had to do, um, and it's really frustrating to me. And I can't tell you how many parents have come up to me like saying, "Why don't you take that back? You never yeah, got right. closed down." But I think what I'm hearing that the end is in sight soon. That's my, that's my understanding. And if you've already got some of the request you know the items done it sounds like we are closing it okay and, and if it if it continues to be a problem perhaps there's a way we can get it into under the um, facilities directors purview um, whether it's through Arlington rec I know um, mr. Feeney when he was acting town manager as well as so after conversations with mr. Chaplin because to me this is just such a it's a small thing but when people come out you know especially on a Friday night you know um, the first night there were no bathrooms, but now those are always open. Made sure they were, but you know, right. it's it's a big fundraiser for it's it's only five to eight hundred dollars probably a night, yeah, you but know. But you know, when you're running a two, three, four, five thousand dollar budget and you don't have that, it's it's a big hit. So, but th thank you very much. On a motion by was it uh, Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Carroll. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. unanimous vote. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. We now have uh, agenda item 18, Arlington Center Parking Management Discussion. Um, yeah, Burr? sure. Um, so uh, last year you might remember that we voted. Um, so I guess I'll start before that. In the Nelson and Nygar study, which kind of spearheaded this uh, whole project, um, they recommended having the first 15 minutes of parking free at all of the on-street meters. Um, after discussions with the uh, Parking Implementation Governance Committee, we recommended to this, uh, this board, which um, we voted on, to remove that first 15 minutes of parking. That was mainly due to discussions with uh, Officer Rateau in, in the committee due to the enforcement side of it. Since um, we took that vote, we found Lexington has put in these same meters and they've been go, um, allowing the first 15 minutes <coughs> free parking and, and it seems to be going pretty smoothly on that front. And uh, you know, the, the center businesses um, would, would kind of like to see this. I think they see it as an easier transition. You know, I, I think that we do have the capacity to handle it. So I, I would ask that we reverse on our vote from last year to go back and allow the first 15 minutes of free parking at the meters. Second. Motion by Mr. Byrne. Did I miss anything? Uh, Mr. Chatelain? No, you... I'll only add, and Mr. Dunn may have the exact same experience because I parked behind him, but at a meeting in Lexington this morning for the Minuteman project, I parked at a meter in Lexington and I hit the 15 minutes free button and it seemed to work out fine. I don't, I don't know if you uh, had the same. I put my quarters in, Mr. Chatelain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I put quarters in. We were there longer than 15 oh. minutes. Oh. <laughs> my goodness. Now, they see. 
Well, our big I, time salaries. We're putting our quarters in, Mr. Chaplain. I put quarters in. But I, I was curious about that. C can I put in 15 minutes and rush back at 14 minutes and put in another 15 minutes and rush back at 14 So you theoretically minutes? could. And I, I, I think oh, where you we, can keep doing I think that. where we ended up was, you know, if, if that is something you need to do, um, we're, we're okay with that because that's pretty You want to run back and forth every 13 yeah. and a half minutes. More, more, more seriously, from, from Lexington, um, they, they've been, the software allows you to track how many times the 15-minute free button is tracked, and the average is for each meter it's pressed 1.3 times a day. So it's actually not pressed all that regularly uh, mm -hmm. to get the first 15 minutes free. Um, I, I, the only thing I would add up, and as we see in Adam's um, memo, you know, if this say doesn't work out, we can always go back and, and reconsider. And I think that's something that's been really effective with um, the group that we have. That you know, we continue to progress, move forward, and, and kind of adapt as we go. Yes, Mr. Dodd. Uh, so I was happy to support this project. Uh, the, the, for me, the compelling reason to support the parking meter project is because. I am completely convinced that it is going to make more parking available because people are going to make different choices about where they park. So, and there's going to be higher turnover in that parking and it's going to be like, you're going to be able to go downtown and you're going to be able to park when you want, where you want, because you're going to be able to go in. And that's what I'm really, uh, uh, and I really, and this appears to support that. And so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy to say it. It was important for me to make this point because as those metal poles have gone in on Mass Ave, I have detected a distinct uptick in the number of comments that I've gotten. You know, no one noticed when we took the vote, but they're <laughs> noticing the metal poles uh, going in. And, uh, and you know, sometimes like, why, you know, why does the town need this money? It's, you know, it's going to kill the businesses. And the answer is we're not doing it for the money. We're doing it for the businesses. And it's going to be a better situation for them. And uh, I think when, if we, the more we can make that message come out, the better off we're going to be. Here, here. Mr. Kiro. I'm happy to support the, the motion as well because, you know, we do have a lot of takeout business here in, in town. We also have a lot of establishments where the, you know, whether it's a dance studio or a martial arts studio, whatever, there was drop-off pickup businesses, and I'm afraid that if we don't do this, you're going to see a lot of double parking and such to try to avoid the hassle of getting the <coughs> ticket. Okay. Um, any further discussion on a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Greeley? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now have before us agenda item 19. Ooh, I'm starting to gas out. <laughs> Vote, proposed vote, uh, Oak Tree 40B board position. Um, uh, had conversations as we all have with town council and the town manager um, regarding the Oak Tree 40B proposal. As we discussed earlier with the ZBA members, um, that's one important issue, issue that's currently before them and will be for quite a while. Um, in, in their advertisement at the beginning of the process, the Zoning Board of Appeals, they indicated they would start the first of many, and correct me if I say anything wrong, first of many public hearings to um, gather input and testimony from citizens, concerned citizens from um, uh, groups, land trust and the like, as well as any town boards, commissions, um, et cetera. Um, and one of my concerns, and I had a conversation with Doug and Adam, was the first night that the, um, they had the hearing. I was afraid that was the first and only night, but um, and I believe it was the last meeting. Perhaps Mr. Chapdelaine wasn't here, but my memory is uh, Attorney Heim outlined that this was just the first. Am I saying it correctly? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, the first of many. So in that vein, I had um, initially thought with my exuberance and uh, energy that I used to have that I would uh, try to work at crack at something that um, restates the board's position, you know, brings what it, the board has said before, before this current board, um, sort of flush out if there is anything that needs to be edited, amended, revised, um, because this has been a longstanding issue. Many boards of selectmen have um, taken, taken very uh, firm, and as far as the length of time I've been on the board, unanimous positions regarding the site um, where Thorndike Place is being proposed in East Arlington, also known as the Mugar site. So I can't take any credit for this. I did ask, and the town manager and town council said they'd be willing to look at everything, kind of come forth with a boilerplate position to present to the board just as a starting point, um, and then 
um, we've all received this and kind of perused through it. And I'm not saying this should, every single one of these words is what I feel or town council or town manager should be exactly what we're saying. It's just sort of a springboard. So with that, um, um, recognizing that it's a very <clears throat> important issue. What I would hope the next step would be is that if we come to an agreement and we can tailor this and customize it to something that um, this board can unanimously um, agree to, that that will be our submission to the ZBA in accordance for um, their uh, request for a public hearing and input from other bodies. And I think that might be one fourth or one fifth of the pie to the end of what Mr. Dunn and Mr. Carroll, Mr. Gurley, Mr. Byrne, and myself were discussing with the ZBA members earlier um, in terms of establishing an appropriate record, get, having it come in appropriately, received appropriately, and utilized in the appropriate fashion. Um, and, and that sort of was the other part of the pie, having um, town manager and possibly in concert with town council um, following up after tomorrow night's meeting with the ZBA members for, to that very point. So to that, this cannot be the perfect document. If it is, then I did write it all, but I didn't. Mr. Kuro. Thank you. No, I'm actually pretty happy with the, with the letter. Um, the only thing that I, I, I would add, I, I was at the ZBA uh, hearing at which they asserted uh, the town's safe harbor um, status, mm. and, and I, I'm wondering if it wouldn't be appropriate to acknowledge that and to thank, thank the board for asserting uh, the safe harbor status. That's a good point. Um, is that something, do you feel you, someone can encapsulate Mr. Kuro's remarks or want to? Yes, Madam Chair, just uh, if I can briefly, I, I think that first we, we definitely can do that. This letter was drafted in, with a great deal of consultation uh, with our special counsel, John Whitten, in terms of what was the scope of what the board could and should say. Um, and I want to note that the individual members of the board expressed a lot of valuable ideas and this isn't the only way in which the board can, you know, uh, articulate uh, some of its very strongly held positions on this. Uh, and as uh, Chair Mahan said, it's, it's really a beginning point and not an end point. Uh, the proponents of the applicants just requested a postponement of the hearing until mid-November. Uh, at which point I think that there will probably be an indefinite postponement because of the one and a half percent status. So I just wanted to note that this board has time for uh, to for all the to address all of the things that Ms. Mahan uh, mentioned. Um, it'll be quite some time before there actually is the next hearing because of the way in which the battle over the one and a half percent calculation is expected to go. So I can definitely do that, Mr. Carroll. Okay, um, Mr. Dunn. Uh, so. I gave a preview, and I was, so I won't excessively repeat myself from, from before. Uh, Doug, uh, when we were talking to the ZBA members, I made a comment along the line of the email that I sent you this <coughs> afternoon, is that uh, I would like us to, so there's a part of this, there's a bit of this letter that gets there, where it talks about, <coughs> um, to assist the board with, uh, to assist the board evaluate the technical mm -hmm. aspects, including an analysis, we, uh, we urge the board to avail itself of its broad rights and, and authority. So I agree with that. We're, so that, you know, that's a paragraph saying, you've got the right to talk to experts and request experts, and you should make sure you do that. Mm -hmm. Totally agree we should be saying that. I want to keep going. Maybe it's like another paragraph. I want to say, um, the decision that you're making is uh, <coughs> going to have, it's going to be the basis for all of the future discussions about Oak Tree. And I don't think, you know, any of, I'm not saying anything that's shocking to anyone where we're expecting this to end up in court. And the basis of the, that, like those court proceedings is going to be the ZBA output. And so we need that ZBA output to be very well written and it needs to be written according to the law and it needs to be written with you know, that few, I mean, we, they should be making the right decision, but they should be expressing the right decision in the way that's going to be sustainable in the, in the court. And I want us to say that to them, which is different from telling them what the outcome should be, but I am trying to tell them how they should do it, if you know what I, if you know what I mean. Makes sense. I understand. Yes. Um, Mr. Greeley? So I, I would just say, has... The zoning board requested this opinion from us. They've requested op opinions, feedback, uh, or analysis from all uh, applicable boards and committees, including the Board of Selectmen. They said Board of Selectmen. They were included in the distribution. Uh, my only concern is this being read as we're telling them what to do. And I don't feel we have the right to do that. 
I feel we have the right to express our opinion, but I just want to be sure it's not read as this Board of Selectmen is telling you to deny this application. I think that's a pretty clear message in this letter. So, But I'll sign it if the Board agrees. I'm just saying I would like it tempered in such a way that we're somehow reporting on you know, I, go ahead. And, and I'm going to call right on Mr. Dunn, and I'm not going to try to say too much, but just I would try to buffer that point with um, we have in-house town council as well as um, Attorney Whitten um, that are sort of helping the town drive the bus. And I think, I don't want to say negligent, I think every town board commission committee um, that is a part of that um, strategy that path down the road um, needs to a do what they can do and no more which is what you're saying mr. Grilly but also be um, really be consistent and stay in concert with the, uh, the these are my words are only and I'm very tired sort of the strategy that the town possibly has developed so that we're all kind of running on the same cylinders so um, I, I would just say maybe some of uh, relief you could get would be from the fact that um, Attorney Whitten and Attorney Heim did play, uh, along with Mr. Chapman, um, a, a large role in this. I really just asked for it and said some things I'd like to see in there about the request for, they're requesting basically a waiver of <coughs> every single uh, permit that they need to get, um, you know, whether it's traffic study, this, that, and the other thing. And before I even asked them to include that, is that appropriate? My, my issue is, if this project is ever built, and I don't think it should be at all, in any way, manner, shape, or form, and I'm not saying what they're zoned for, what they could do, which is like six or eight townhouses, it's whatever. Um, but um, I feel that since the project that they've submitted has ki kicked in anywhere from four to six different um, possible studies, traffic, environmental, um, ec ecology, et cetera, and they're requesting all of them to be waived, my position is you've submitted a project that has cl clicked off four to six, I haven't looked at it in depth, um, extra things you need to do, and you need to do them all. You know, this is a huge project you're submitting, and you know, so, and first I found out, is, is that something we could even comment on, and would, you know, would be appropriate, would be in line, or perhaps against a, a legal strategy, and was told no, that's exactly, you know, we can just say it's our opinion. They have the final word and final say, but Mr. Dunn, Mr. Greeley, I'm, um, I, I get what you're saying, and I, and I agree with everything in general. One way to handle that may be, in the first paragraph in particular, we can add something along the lines of saying, we very much respect the authority of the ZBA. We do not presume to tell you what to do. We do have thoughts, you know, and we have opinions, and we're going to express them. Yep. The, the one part of the one the word deny, the one part word deny here in the very top of the second page, which I think is one of the things that Diane was just referring to, I actually do feel strongly about that one, is that um, the wet, we should not be giving a full waiver on the wetlands. Yeah. It is, in, like that piece of property is a wetland and we have to defend that. Right. And, I, and I don't mind expressing I don't either. that to the ZBA. I don't either. I don't, I don't mind most of this. I really don't. If we will add your copy, I mean, in a way it's stated here, the mindful that we are not a plan, Sorry. Sorry. Mindful that we are not a planning board or the planning director. Well, why don't we say we are not the zoning board of appeals, but in order to assist you or something, as long as that caveat is put in there, I'm not disagreeing. We're against this and we want, you know, it is wetlands and we want to protect it and, you know, but I don't want another board to feel we're telling them this is what you are to do. So, Attorney Hunt, did you, do you want to sort of ferret, parrot back what you think Mr. Greeley says? Do you want to add to that second to the last paragraph? Do you want to move that second to the last paragraph? Or do you want an a, a, a additional I, I, paragraph? I think Mr. Dunn's recommendation was the better one, the first paragraph. Either. I, I'm no. OK, but you do want, comfortable Doug you do do want the verbiage to say, similar to where it says mindful, we're not a planning department or planning board. You also want, we're also not the zoning board of appeals. Yes. So something? Something of that nature. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I think what I would like to be able to do, because the board will have not just a little time, a lot of time, mm -hmm. uh, given the current posture of things, is I'd like to um, provide uh, a 
revised version of this, taking into account all the comments heard here and any other things that you individually want to express to me mm -hmm. and giving a final draft on the 31st for your approval, but, but, but for that meeting, but within the next, I don't know, three or f by the end of this week, have a final draft for your review that tries to incorporate all these comments and make sure that everybody is comfortable with the ways in which we're making sure it's very clear that this is the board, the bo this is a body of elected officials. You have very strong feelings about this project and that you're not uh, saying that you're acting as the Zoning Board of Appeals or directing them just because you appoint them. You are saying these are serious, huge concerns. This is how you feel about it. You expect that they will vet all these things in the extreme. Mr. Greeley. No, I, I, as Doug has been talking, I think, I think the way to handle this is um, that the first paragraph reads something like, Dear Zoning Board of Appeals, at your meeting on such and such, you requested input from the Board of Selectmen. Isn't that what you said, Adam? Mm -hmm. Yes. That takes care of it, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Done. Job well done. Thank can, you. Can I it ask? Takes me a while. <laughs> Three or four speeches, I find. <laughs> but by the fourth, boom. <laughs> Sorry. Are bad. you comfortable now? I am absolutely comfortable. Because I don't want you to be uncomfortable. No, at no. All. right. I just. Um, I I'm totally zoned out. I know you said that um, the uh, Oak Tree development has asked for a postponement till November, possibly beyond that. Our next meeting in November is it the fourteenth? It's not the seventh. No, no, yeah. a meet, meeting in November. I, what I'm thinking is I'd uh, like to I'm, have, I'm, I'd like to give Doug and everyone else uh, enough time as well as have a full board. I don't think we're going to have a full board on October 31st, and I think on something like this. Uh, do you see any detriment to waiting until November 14th? So what is, what is overwhelmingly likely to happen, Madam Chair, is they have asked for the postponement so that they can appeal our safe harbor status to DHCD. It'll then go to DHCD, we'll file response to their appeal. There will be some vetting process there that'll take a long period of time. Then there will probably be another appeal either by us or by uh, the applicants of DHCD's view and it'll go to the Housing Appeals Committee and the Housing Appeals Committee will have a process. And so we're looking at at least we're looking at many months before, they, before the ZBA convenes its next hearing and needs to have its next round of correspondence that they're actually going to, you know, start requiring more information from the applicants. Mm -hmm. So the November 14th date is okay? Yes. <laughs> Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, completely. Good. Okay, so um, I do know we're going to, this is still a, a work in progress. I can see a couple of people here. Um, are you, were you here just to observe the discussion? Did you have any brief remarks that you, and I mean, yes, yeah, sure. If you can just say your name and address for the record. If you just hung in there for so long. <laughs> My name is John Yerowich. I'm a, almost a 50 year resident of Arlington. We live for 33 years in the area called Ladyville. It's very flat, 150 feet or so from the Muga property. Uh, you know all the issues we have with it. Um, we have just uncovered that the number of units may not be 219, but instead 231. If you know that, then I repeat. But if you didn't, it's good information for you. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, John Belchus has come up with a letter. Uh, we spoke about this at the ZBA meeting, uh, showing there are 131 additional affordable housing units on land area to be considered in the 1.5 minimum uh, for safe harbor. Uh, how that can legally be inserted into this argument is uh, we, we may be, it may be locked out. I don't know. That's the legal stuff I don't understand. That all being said, um, as a member of the coalition to save the Mugar Wetlands, the Ladyville Neighborhood Association and the East Arlington Neighborhood Good Neighbor Committee, I, for one, want to say thank you. We work as allies to save the town's goals in their master plan. The Zoning Board of Appeals and their 34 bulleted issues, minimums and maximums for any developer to, com to comply with. And for our own neighborhood, the, the depths of problems we have now only to be exacerbated by future development down there uh, my hearty and sincere thank you for your help. Thank, thank you, Mr. Yerowitz. We appreciate you. it. 
Thank you Thank for you. staying here so long right. to say that. Did you want to say anything? Appreciate it. That's just up to the microphone. I just see the two of them here. She's on, she's on our team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pamela Miller, Birch Street. I butt the Mugar Woods. Um, I don't usually speak at these things, but we had a meeting last night of the East Arlington group and the coalition, and we just decided that some of us wanted to come and just thank the, the town for the support, and we've been stressing that um, in terms of what's happening with this, that we have to continue to support the town, um, and that because this is an Arlington issue, it's not just an East Arlington issue, um, and it, it impacts surrounding neighborhoods as well. So we, we want to make sure that we just want to say thank you, but also let you know that we want to support the town, and that's why we're, we're really going to try to be active in terms of knowing when the meetings are and having a presence and just letting everybody know that the group is, it's not just an East Arlington issue, it's, it's a town issue as well. So just want to make sure that everybody here knows that we appreciate everything that you've been doing. So thank you. Thank you also for staying okay, to the and, end. Um, was it a motion by Mr. Greeley that I heard to postpone this to November 14th, 2016? Yes, it was. And was it seconded by? Second. Mr. Dunn, um, and um, anything else that may come to any one of us in the middle of the night, we'll contact either Attorney Heim or um, Mr. Chapdelaine in terms of- yeah, In the middle of the night. <laughs> in the middle of the night. I hope so. Yeah. Um, yeah. With that, on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Unanimous vote. God bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Under correspondence received, we have two. One, um, Martha Ingalls, regarding the Robbins Library parking meters. And one via email from Simon Chase, Public Transportation and Cycling Infrastructure. Is a motion to receive by? I'll move to receive, but I'm Mr. going to Mr. Curo, seconded by? Mr. Greeley. Mr. Greeley, OK. Any discussion on the one, Mr. Curo? Yeah, I, I did uh, want to discuss the, um, the request around the parking at the um, Robbins Library. Um, I think that the correspondent raised some, some interesting points about, about the way that that particular area is used. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, and I'm kind of directing my remarks, I guess, to Mr. Byrne and Mr. Chapdelaine, if, if, if the um, parking implementation group had considered possibly looking at that differently or running a pilot there um, on, on pay by space instead of... Uh, uh, display, or if they'd be willing to do so. So, um, and Adam, correct me if I'm misspeak, but uh, I we did talk about this, and it I think it came down to cost. Um, I, um, if just how that um, lot's set up, I think that it was, um, you know, a, a more fiscally prudent decision to have one of the, uh, you know, the bigger kiosk as opposed to meters in each spot. Is that? So that, that is factual, uh, may I, Madam Chair? Yeah, we, we, ha we did agree to install a centralized <coughs> uh, kiosk, uh, but I do, I do think it would be worth referring the matter to the committee for next week's meeting. Yep. Given, um, you know, we had decided to make a recommendation to the board to do pay and display in the Russell Common lot and the railroad lot based on the cost and upkeep of either painting uh, space numbers on the ground or having to put signs in the grass near the spots uh, based on you know winter conditions, either blocking or even just uh, fading the paint. However, in a smaller lot like the library lot, um, it feasible. could be more feasible and give us a chance to see how it worked for a season or two. So I, I think it is worth us taking a look at. And the, the beauty of it is, <clears throat> the we we buy one type of meter, but the software is flexible enough that we could do pay by license plate, pay by space, or pay and display. So we actually it's not you know, a which meter we purchase issue, it's how we program it. So we actually, we're fortunate to have that flexibility. Yeah. Okay. So part of Mr. Carroll's motion, seconded by Mr. Grayley, is to refer the parking meter, meter correspondence to the Parking Management Committee, am I saying? Parking Implementation, Implementation and Governance, Governance Committee. Committee. I'm sorry, I, Implement, is that right? The pig seat. Okay? What would that acronym be? I know, I, uh, I grow every time. Mr. Dunn. <laughs> uh, on the second item, the related to the bicycle, so there's a bicycle fatality uh, 
10 days ago now. And uh, that one has resonated through the biking community, I think, more than most of them have recently. And I actually couldn't even put my finger on why this particular one has been um, more painful than so many of the other ones. And uh, I don't have, and I just, and I, would, and I didn't want that correspondence to just kind of sail by. I wanted to comment on it, and I wanted to say that I do think that we're doing a lot of the right things with the, you know, with the work that we're doing for uh, bike lanes, for enforcement, for education of uh, the, uh, like education of our police about how to like do enforcement both for bicyclists and for motorists as they relate to bicyclists. Uh, the complete streets work that w that we do in the programming that we've adopted. So I think that. Um, I mean, is it enough? I don't, you know, it's one of those things, you, you know, it's never enough, it's all, it's sometimes it's too much, but at the same time, I wanted to say, uh, I wanted to acknowledge the message and say that I think we hear it and we, we work on it. Okay, um, with that, a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Greeley, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. New business, Mrs. Kropelka? Attorney Hine? Uh, one small matter, uh, thank you for allowing me to be loaned out to the ARB uh, tonight. They uh, approved uh, recommended votes of no action on both uh, articles before them for this special town meeting. Mr. Chapterling. Uh, before I go, Madam Chair, uh, there's a resident here who's been yeah. waiting patiently. I think want to maybe speak on one of the items of correspondence received. Sure. No, no problem. You, you've hung okay. out with us for so long. Just name an address for the record, okay. please. Okay, hi. Eileen Cahill, 48 Dixon Ave. Um, Thank you very much. I, I was one that didn't know about the parking meters until I saw them being constructed. So um, the selectman's office sent me a copy of the report and I, was, I read through it. And a consideration that I don't think was factored in, but maybe it's just not written there, is the um, user, users, the primary users of Medford Street being two schools, Fidelity House and the St. Agnes Church. So, um, you know, my children attend St. Agnes School, so it's, it's going to be a, 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 a big inconvenience for me to pay the meter when I, you know, have to go pick up my children. Um, and it does take more than 15 minutes, typically, because I have, I have a lot of children there, and um, just the logistics of getting the parking spot going over there. So I was wondering if the committee could look at um, the other thing with that is going to mass. Mass is at least an hour. Um, I know the town lot will be, um, I know Sundays will be free, but there's Saturday evenings and there's also, um, you know, holy days and um, then there's Eucharistic adoration the first Friday of the month. So there's things that the church does that you're, you know, looking for spots and there's, um, I know that report mentioned people like their willingness to walk further, they pay less, but then there's some elderly that are not able to, they're not necessarily handicapped, but they're not, you know. So it just seemed to me like the report just didn't understand the dynamic of the street. So, um, which could very well be, you know, engineers not familiar with the town. And I was just wondering if that was taken into consideration with metering Medford Street. Okay. What we could do is maybe also refer that, unless that someone actually has an answer to that, but refer that to If the Mr. board's Byrne. willing to entertain it, I could give a partial answer and then we could certainly recommend, you know, refer to the sure. parking committee as well. I, I think the, the partial answer I would give it is we, we, we certainly did take it into consideration and okay. that's why Sunday is not um, metered on either the street or in the, in the lots. Uh, and that was, <clears throat> that was really in the forefront, making sure that Sundays weren't metered. I think the big challenge we have is there's certain times of day where the institutional users like the high school, St. Agnes, and the church are the big users, but there's other times of day where the Regent Theater and all the restaurants and the book rack are the big users on the street looking for turnover. So I think we do have that sort of internal challenge of having there being certain times of day where there's, again, the institutional users, other times of day where there's the businesses desperate for turnover. So, um, you know, I'm, I wouldn't, I won't claim to the board that we have that perfect balance, but I think that's the, that's the challenge we see. So, okay. Um, so, how does the installing the parking meters help it? I think I think it, it helps to create turnovers for the businesses on um, on Medford Street, of which there's a pretty a significant high, a high density of. of, of businesses. But, uh, but I also, oh, did someone else? Sorry. 
I don't know. Do you want this discussion or do you not want it? I think that maybe we should have yeah, the, the yeah, parking implementation okay. governance that's what committee I, first. I tried from the get-go. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, uh, it's mindful of, so that's why I'm saying the com committee is meeting and yeah. just like with everything, everything's evolving and, and trying to find a way, so. Yeah, but, no, I don't want, and, I just and, wanted to ask. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, it, it, Met information definitely received. We will start working on that, and then um, any possible solution or solutions, it'll be posted on a future agenda. Um, okay, yeah. Just to do everything and comport, because I don't want anybody to say, "Hey, you didn't really say you're going to talk about that." Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, but I also I do respect the fact, and we're grateful that you came down and um, hung around for so long. So um, I appreciate the town manager highlighting that Thank you're you here. Very so. Much. So the process has started, the information's in, it's now going to trickle its way down. So it, it'll probably eventually come back to this board and be discussed again in public. Thank you so much. Right, great, thanks. Is that, is that okay? Thank you. That's fine. Yeah. That's um, my, my turn for new business. Uh, two, two quick pieces. Um, Nat Strasberg, who you met earlier uh, tonight, uh, just in, within this uh, next 10 days or so, we'll be attending with other members of the planning department a meeting on Hubway and potential opportunities for Arlington and Hubway, uh, which we do still have some very significant cost concerns about, but we'll also be meeting in cooperation with Lexington and Bedford, um, uh, attending a meeting to talk about uh, something similar to Hubway called Zagster, which is less investment, uh, newer technology than Hubway. Lexington and Bedford are very interested in it, um, and we would potentially have an interest in Zagster. So that'll be a topic that we'll probably be talking about more uh, in terms of bike sharing along the Minuteman bikeway. So I just wanted to give the board uh, a quick update on that. And then good news, uh, we have uh, officially hired a new economic development coordinator. Her name is Allison Carter. Uh, she has most recently been the Brighton Main Streets Coalition coordinator. Uh, and <clears throat> so she comes with actually a, a great deal of real sort of boots on the ground working with businesses experience and we're really excited to have her come on. She starts November 14th. so. Maybe on our first day we can have her come before the, the Board of Select. I'd love to, but if you don't want to subject her to that, I'll leave it to you to let me know what <laughs> November meeting she comes see. in. We'll, we'll see how long the agenda is that night. We'll see how long her exactly. day is. Exactly, exactly. And that's all I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Greeley. Yeah, um, just uh, Joe, Adam, and I attended and want to congratulate the uh, Chamber of Commerce on their 100th anniversary. Um, and um, all of you um, allowed me to uh, put a proclamation together for them and in doing so and researching, uh, eight individuals in 1916 started what then was called the Board of Trade. One of them was a gentleman by the name of Charles Higgins, who then went on to become a selectman from 1921 to 1924. So as I said that night, uh, our cooperation between businesses and the town has uh, been going for at least 100 years. Thank you. No new business here. Mr. Carroll. Three quick things. Um, firstly, I, I just I want to acknowledge, I know that they weren't Arlington residents, but I want to acknowledge the citizens who um, uh, made the heroic rescue on, on Spy Pond. Um, I personally witnessed an analogous um, incident this, this summer that didn't have as happy an ending, and I can tell you it unfolds very quickly, and if you see the video, you'll see that. Um, so I think we want to we want to commend them, and obviously our first responders who, who helped to, to you know clear the vehicle and tend to the um, to the victim. But um, it was really extraordinary act of uh, bravery. Uh, secondly, on a on a lighter note, um, we heard tonight uh, about the uh, initiative in East Arlington. The Audison Middle School actually is doing something very similar called Inside Out right now which in part was um, a response uh, by the art teachers at the school to some of the acts of uh, you know, racial hatred we've seen, we saw in the town with the spray painting of swastikas and, and um, some other um, <clears throat> incidents uh, tearing down Black Lives Matter and or whatnot. They've taken pictures of a lot of the kids within the middle school and they're actually gonna use similar technology to what we saw here <coughs> plastered out all over the Audison Middle School. I think that's being unveiled on the 29th of October. It's called Inside Out, and that's the, um, our teachers up there are, are, um, are leading it. And lastly, um, I want to remind everybody that, uh, believe it or not, early voting for the election um, 
begins on October 24th. It begins uh, a week from today uh, during uh, business hours at the town hall, the following Saturday from 9 to 5, I believe, and then I, I think several several days the following week. The, until November, until November 4th. So uh, if you really want to put this, 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 this horrible national nightmare to bed, <laughs> you can get down here and, and vote early and, uh, and uh, know that you've done your civic duty. So thank you very much. Mr. Dunn. We've made it this far and no one's mentioned we have a special town meeting on Wednesday. I'm waiting for you. This, that's one of them, as well as two other things. I'm going to say you got the last cleanup to do it. All right, so uh, we have a special town meeting on Wednesday. And one of the delightful things about the special town meeting is you don't have to watch the debate because you'll be watching the, or at and voting at the special town meeting where we can do things like talk about building schools. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about building schools. We can talk about rocks. We can talk about marijuana and um, a whole variety of topics that we will get to enjoy on Wednesday, uh, 8 o'clock here in town meeting, uh, excuse me, here in town hall. Um, second item I wanted to mention is that this morning, Adam and I were at uh, Lexington, in Lexington where we met um, 11 of the Minuteman school district towns, uh, and including Belmont. Uh, and so we had some people there who are both uh, we had Belmont leaders and also some people who are um, hoping to keep Belmont within uh, Minuteman, their special town meeting is also Wednesday night. So if you have a, um, anyone who um, is a town meeting member in Belmont, remember to get them there and to say that we, we would love for them to stay in uh, Minuteman. And so that was that, that conversation. So their vote is gonna be Wednesday. Uh, if, they vote, if they vote to stay, a done deal if they vote to leave this board will have the option to call a special town meeting to try to stop them from leaving that would take we'd need nine towns to approve that out of the 16 in order to stop them which is long odds and i'm not sure we'd actually want to mm -hmm. but regardless should we get to that point i will ask the chair to put it on the mm -hmm. board uh, on the agenda so that we can choose not to do it but we should at least talk about it before we get there. So that was it. So put it on an, as an agenda item, Depending whether we on decide Wednesday. to do it or not to do it. Right, but, it, but, but it, okay. we'll, we'll wait till Wednesday's result before we. So I'm not gonna get into it, because I have yet. a question, in it, but I don't wanna get into a discussion on it, so okay. I'll work with the vice chair on that. Okay, you did a minimum, you did town meeting. I'm really running on fumes. Does Mr. Caro or Mr. Chapterlain, I don't think we've met, have we met since the school enrollment task force meeting? We have not. Could somebody, I, I, I have things in my head, but I'm not gonna articulate appropriately. So, so to just give the rest of the board a quick update? Yeah, absolutely. So the school enrollment task force uh, did meet, I think two weeks ago now, uh, which led to recommendations being made to the finance committee, which will be bought, uh, brought before the town meeting on Wednesday night. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the school enrollment task force voted favorably to recommend building the sixth classroom addition at the Thompson School. Uh, asking for an appropriation of $4 million, which was the limit set by the debt exclusion. Basically, uh, Charlie Foskett summed it up very well. We had set a threshold in the spring, uh, uh, an enrollment threshold. We exceeded that enrollment threshold, and that verified the need to go forward and build the expansion. Uh, secondly, there was an article, on, uh, there is an article at town meeting in regards to potentially putting modular classrooms at the Audison for one year until the Gibbs opened up. Uh, after uh, a great deal of discussion and analysis, the superintendent recommended to the task force not pursuing those modulars, uh, modulars for that one year uh, and instead reconfiguring uh, in the, the way they use some classrooms in the Audison for that one year before the Gibbs is available. Um, going further, we're now going to start focusing on the issue at the Hardy School. Uh, there is an impending issue in terms of enrollment at the Hardy. Uh, so we are meeting again in November uh, to begin in more detail discussing that uh, to hopefully fast track what we want to do in regards to the Hardy. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, think it's, uh, I think it was a colleague, Cindy Starks, sort of equated a, a quasi situation in terms of a school that she works in in Lexington because people were saying about, you know, you said six to eight modular classrooms and how, how are you going to do this? And um, I, do you want to relay the story that she said? I think she basically said, you know, she's in Lexington, she's in the classroom. I think of the high school, sometimes you had seven or eight periods. And if you were a teacher in a certain classroom, you knew sometimes you had period four, six, and seven 
that the classroom wasn't being used and you kind of had it to yourself and you could get caught up in administrative or some other things. Am I encapsulating it Yeah, correctly? and I think, I think really the crux of the, of the argument here is, is that unless you're going to fund the addition of, of more clusters at the middle school, it doesn't make sense because you're not adding the common space at all. You're just you're adding more classrooms. A lot of those, those common area constraints aren't really addressed and, and we're best off <coughs> focusing our energy on the Audison project and, and the, the sixth grade only, which is going to require attention from the administrators there as well. Okay. Thank you. I just, it was all floating in my head. With that, I'll take a, unless I hear something different, a motion to adjourn so by Mr. Second. Byrne, seconded by Mr. Grayley. All those in favor say aye. All those aye. opposed, unanimous vote. We are adjourned. See you October 31st. See you Wednesday night with Dan.